Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to round one, and uh, we have a very sweaty match here. Thought it was going to be an easy one in the first round, but uh, we got a uh, Nerexa or Serkia. So in the uh, we got to the semifinals of a tournament the other night. Uh, we actually lost to him. So it was Slanesh versus um, his Wood Elves. And I'm playing Tomb Kings. I don't know how this matchup looks exactly, but um, shouldn't be too crazy. Let's see if we can figure it out, man. So just got to do a little bit of admin work while we get the tournament started. I will be on the Bone Daddies versus the Tomb Kings and uh, we should uh, the Bone Daddy versus Wood Elves, excuse me. And we should be having some fun. All right, so let me just do a little bit of admin work. All right, so he needs to get a point. So we'll do this. All right, and then we will message this player and it should be fine. All right, so just got to do this. Okay. How you guys all doing, by the way? I hope you're doing well. Give me a minute. All right, when you can. All right, guys. It's Bone Daddy time. I've been slaving on the Warhammer table, painting skeleton warriors for hours and hours to try and get the battle reports ready. So I figured it's time to, uh, you know, play the Tomb Kings here and see how this goes. So I don't know what the meta is in this matchup, but we're going to figure it out. And uh, we're going to try. Yeah, we're going to try. Yeah, great stags are pretty good. They're pretty good. They can definitely be menacing. I think we obviously are going to want some Tomb Guard. Um, should be pretty decent. So let's go ahead and get the blocker up and have some fun. All right, all right. Good Anakin. Kislev is banned because they're really OP. Um, I know there was a patch today that took away the healing item and it also uh, nerfed Kairos. And, but I mean, it doesn't even scratch the surface of why Kislev is OP. Um, there's a lot of things they do insanely well. So I, I think there needs to be a little bit more... Kind of nerf it, nerf, nerf action on those bad boys. Yeah. All right. So the bone, the bone daddies are here. Uh, as far as what else we want to bring, we could bring a couple of these just to play the field. And then I think some of these in reserve, maybe. Yes. Those are very, very good. Yeah. Arkin's pretty good here. Buna spam on the cavalry is always very good. Um, he, he in general is very powerful. Just having the the skeleton summons and other tools like that is uh, is very good. Spirit Leech is also good. You can just go with the classic Spirit Leech Bino combo. I find that it does pretty well. So, other than DJ and Arkin, um, yeah, Cetra can be okay. Probably not in this matchup. Like I think maybe against Bretonia, you could bring like Cetra on foot with his halberd and have him spell spamming just to get the lore passive action. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see. All right, so aside from that, let's see. How, what else do you want to mix into the main army? Maybe a couple of these. Good, Anakin, good. And then Nakara horsemen are just super good. They defeat the Wood Elf Light Cavalry. They will lose to, like, Wild Rider Tier Cab, but in general, I think, are pretty cost-effective. And um, yeah, let's cut you, and then we can get this. All right, should be fine. And we are ready to go, man. Yeah, Kairos losing regrowth is more of a land battle thing. Kairos isn't even OP in Dom because domination mode has a contained victory condition where you can just, you know, the game just essentially ends uh, due to the objectives oftentimes. So Kairos doesn't get a chance to abuse his Winds of Magic pool like as long. And plus there's like reinforcements in Dom mode. So it's not like, you know, losing, a, you know, units of blue fire spam or whatever um, is as bad. Yeah, they still need to nerve Kislev. Um... The, yeah, they're, they're just whole rosters insane. All, all the new stuff they've gotten, and uh, it's just, it's very brutal. It's very, very brutal. Sorry, Chair, my heart is... Uh, you know, I wouldn't... Nerexa is... Uh, or Serkia, as they are on leaderboard, let me show you guys right now, is um, currently, yeah, one of the top players for sure. And on top of that is a Wood Elf main. I don't really know Tomb King super well. I play them every now and then, but um, yeah, we're going to see how this goes. So let's go ahead and check. All right. And here we go. So yeah, he's up here, 11 and 6. I'm currently, I just, this isn't going to last, by the way. I'm currently rank 1, which is definitely, I just won a tournament with Slanesh. But um, yeah, that's not going to last. And uh, but yeah, he's he's like a scary Wood Elf main, like very, very scary. And uh, I would expect he knows this matchup better than me. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to get some, uh, some fortunate results here. All right. So let's switch back. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, the Tomb King's Chariots are okay. You can slap one in. I usually do that. I'll bring one just to help deal with like a, you know, like a Wood Elf Infantry unit or something. Maybe like a Dryad on the side point. A like a single carrion also probably isn't a terrible tech. Bone Giants you can mix in. Um, Bone Giants in this matchup, I guess if they have like a Dragon character, you can potentially snipe that bad boy out of the sky. It's not the worst. 
But the Sepulchral Stalker ROR also kind of fulfills a similar role, um, just having him kind of lurking in the backfield, right? So, yeah, to each their own there, to each their own. Voice level's fine. Does it sound a little bit different? Hmm, should be the same. Should be the same. Yeah, chariots in general, unless they're really tanky. I mean, they, they get, like, the Tomb King's chariots only, yeah, I guess they do have 80 armor. And tabletop, they're pretty cool. The Tomb King's chariots, they're definitely no, no joke. They can they can go fisticuffs. All right, so let's get you. And um, Tomb Guard Halberds in this matchup, not too good of an idea, in my opinion. Although Wood Elves can go with some mass, but you have plenty of shooting to wear them down and Spirit Leeches and, you know, different things like that. So I feel like that will kind of cover our bases. We got two of those, and can we afford one more Skeletor? Uh, let's pull a Skeletor here, and then get you in the main army. All right, I like this build. I think it's cool. I think it's got some teeth. Let's see how it plays out here, man. Good luck, have fun to my opponent. Hopefully, you guys are ready to party, because I sure am, baby. Ark and the Black's coming. Do you think the Dreadquake Mortar is OP? Says Lucas. No, no, it's really bad, actually. The Dreadquake Mortar is oh, really expensive. It has a, a buggy firing mechanism, so when you fire it, you can't tell it not to fire. If you take fire at will off the Dread Mortar, uh, the Dreadquake Mortar, it will still keep shooting. So you, it just like they'll just send their chaff units into range of it, and unless you turn it 360 and have it face the other way, it's such a buggy mess. Um, like on, maybe on Itza, okay, if you're on Itza against a faction with like elite infantry, it could be good. That's pretty much it, though. Yeah, pretty much it. All the Rangers need a buff. Yeah, they're okay. They uh, Serka uses them. The other night, he beat my Slanesh. We had a really close game. Um, Really, really close. It was my Slanesh versus his Wood Elves. And I've been practicing Slanesh a lot. Uh, but he beat me with... I believe he had some Wilder Rangers in the build. The ROR. The Wardens of Sithril he brought. I don't think he brought the regular variant as well. No, I don't stream on Twitch. Only on YouTube, yeah. I prefer YouTube. I don't know. I like the culture here. I like the people. You know. That's how we roll, man. That's how we roll. So it should be fun. If you could take down the um, the hard wood today, that's going to be a nice grab. This map is hard, though, for, for I would say, against the wood because they have some really, really nice ambush points on the sides. Tree Ant build? We have answers against Tree Can. I'm not too concerned about Tree Can, to be honest. Yeah, I got Bo Shopti and stuff, so, you know, Bo Shopti will, uh, you know, make it rain on them. All right, so here's the build. We got a lot of skeleton boys, so no surprises there. Front line's going to be skeleton warriors, and they're just there to take a beating for uh, Cetra and for the, uh, for the gods. And we're going to send one Tomb Guard over to the side point to hold that, I think. But we'll keep two in the initial army. All right, so in the second rank, we're going to have you guys. These are going to be the Tomb Guard Sword and Board, just to give us some cap weight. And I actually like Skeleton Archers in this matchup. They could get wrecked, which is fine. But um, we're going to we're gonna try them out and see if they can get a little bit of value. So Arkin's going to be using Buna. We got these guys just to poke and kind of do some forward scouting. We're going to keep the Ushapti Great Bows like, very deep set. So let's kind of put them like as far back as possible. And the Skeleton Spear can just kind of hang out on the flanks and uh, do it. <laughs> do it. Uh, he can actually just go to the side objective at first and join, get joined by a Tomb Guard in uh, due time. So there we have it, man. There we have it. Could I deal with seven Tree Lords? Probably not, actually. Seven Tree Lords would probably kill me. Um, I do have Eyes of the Desert and Screaming Meme Catapults, but I don't have a ton of Anti-Large. I would actually be a little nervous if he went like Double Dragon, although I do have Triple Archer. And Bo Shopti, so it's not like I would be defenseless against them. You know, we have some tools. But uh, thank you guys for joining. It's going to be a fun one. A little bit groggy. I was up late last night. Couldn't sleep too well. You know, classics. Classic mid-30s stuff. And uh, let's see if we can get this. 14 units, so it's a little bit of a wider army. Probably Eternal Guard, War Dancers, those type of things. So we're going to need to uh, drop, some, uh, drop some heat on them. All right, so let's go do a little bit of skirmishing out of the gates. We'll move up and get you moving here. And, uh, okay, he's doing the Melkot spam, so he's got a Spellsinger hidden in the woods, and he's just going to be spamming uh, Melkots basically, which is pretty good damage. That's why we need to send a good quality Tomb Guard unit over to the side objective to make sure we can hold that, so. All right, let's go explore, see what he's got. He's obviously got some Sneaky Sneaky over there, and uh, Ark in the Black is going to be ready. We could pop this. Uh, do we want the recharge to get the Bunas ready? I think we're all right. Yeah, so there's the main core of his army. So it's an Eternal Guard, Starfire Shaft kind of army. So the answer against this is probably the catapults. Could we get a Palpatine cackle? Oh, hold on, let me find it. Oh, shit, okay, hold on. Uh, there you go. Had to find it for you, thank you, man. Oh, Arkin getting sniped. Oh, that's right, that's what they do in this matchup. They just cheese your lord, okay. So I need to run into the trees and just hide for like the remainder of this match. He's got double Waystalker, and you can see he was able to pop Arkin pretty good. So we're just gonna go live in the trees for now. Um, yeah, my mistake. You see, this is the little things that you learn by, like, he plays this matchup probably a, a bit, and I don't. So, I gotta, I gotta be, 
more responsive here. So let's move forward and see if we can waste some of the ammunition and just get him to shoot at these guys. All right, come on. There you go. All right, there's the shots. So we're just baiting out a little bit of ammo. And now in the meantime, we can get you to come up. And let's get this catapult rolling, rolling, rolling. So we're going to position you here. Arkin's just going to hang out in the tree line. And that'll be good for a couple reasons. Because, yeah, he's got double way stalker. So he's just looking to cheese Arkin. Yeah, classic Wood Elves. Wood Elves have a rule like that in Tabletop too, where they actually... Um, yeah, we'll see if he has anything on that objective as well. We're just going to poke forward and shoot. We've arrived at the side point, and uh, let's get you guys up here. Arkin's going to hang out. Now the rest of our points are mainly going to be spent on, like, Collins and things like that. And we're just going to keep Arkin here and just be in a cavalry as they move into our backfield is basically going to be the game plan. Yeah, because I can't afford to lose my lord, right? That would suck really bad. That would suck very, very badly. All right, so the bow shop D, let's put him in four. And get him ready to shoot. And, um, yeah, we're wearing down an Eternal Guard unit. We're just kind of being annoying, really. So, all right, let's get you over here, and then you back here. And we can pull these cavalry to go help here. Yeah, we got Dryads coming. Arkin could maneuver over there. Um, we also do have some uh, skeletons we could do. I wonder if he's going to try and collapse from here. It's hard to say. Let's call in some chariots in the backfield to kind of clean this up. All right, so Arkin's still in the bushes, and we are being shot a little bit. Now we can get our Bow Shopti to start unleashing uh, salvos, and we'll just kind of start on some Eternal Guard for now. And, um, yeah, we should be able to wreck these dryads pretty good and get up, up on this point again. So let's move up, move up. And how are we looking on the rest of the battle lines? All right, catapult's almost in range, so we want to get on this. We see some sneaky, sneaky cavalry coming around the side. And if he's shooting into our, you know, our shielded, our shielded boys, then that's, like, totally fine, right? So the dryads are lurking, but we got it under control. Let's pull the chariots into the front, and we need to get some the Hekara horsemen um, at the ready to protect our catapult because this thing is going to be a huge red winner. And um, we're almost in range now. All right, so that's good. And our archers are at the ready. So let's shoot here. Um, we can shoot here. And we can go ahead and shoot here a little bit. Let's move up and call it a day. Arkin can go ahead and, you know, just wait. We're just going to lurk with old Arkin and see what's cracking. So I got the side point under control. Um, let's actually put you, like, down on the side here to deny that flank a little bit. We got the chariots coming. Chariots are lurking. Bow shop here are going to start delivering some hammering volleys. And we'll pop out and just Buna whatever, you know. Uh, he's trying to wear down the catapult with his uh, his shots there, which is a good call. Arkin, uh, do we want to pop out in Buna? We got war dancers coming, or those are dryads. Okay, so yeah, just shoot there. You guys engage here. We got the war dancers moving up and creeping, so that's fine. We'll pull you guys back and get the Nehekar horsemen coming out here and get another one to just kind of replace and guard the catapult and keep you there. All right, so those guys are getting kited, and um, some of the archers are going to get caught here, which is okay. Let's get you guys to do this. Arkin is going to pop out in Buna. And skeleton summon some of these guys. All right, so let's do this. Do this. Those are actually war dancers with Azurai spears. That's like a great target for us. And Arkin can go ahead and spirit leech you. So we're going to attack here with Arkin. And then we can Buna some of the other targets as well. So let's do this. Perfect. Take that bad boy out. Great. Let's get the chariots to run over him. Those cavalry should get messed up here. And um, Arkin does not merge from the forest. Uh, we can Buna these dryads if we want to. I think just dropping a skeleton summon on top of them is going to be enough though. And we'll see if Arkin can win this fight versus this guy. Might be able to. All right, let's do that. And uh, we can drop the staff from Nagash as well. All right, so we've run through. The flanks should be more or less okay. He's trying to ninja this point from us. So let's get the skeleton horsemen over here for cap weight. Let's keep that from getting too crazy. Catapults, we need to switch on to the bow units in the back. And let's go ahead and penetrate through if we can. Yeah, we've been able to break through, which is great. And Arkin is still cackling. So let's do this and spirit leech this waste talker again. Keep these archers shooting at the Glade Guard Starfire shafts. And uh, how are we looking here? We might be able to do a little something something. We do have a Buna in the back pocket. So that's going to be very nice, and we do start to see some Christmas cavalry. Those are, oh no, those are Sisters of Thorn. Okay, so that's fine. We'll park you guys here, and let's go uh, collapse on these archers right there, and we can do a new Shopti Summon on those archers right there. All right, so it's all going pretty good, I would say. We got his Waystock offline, which is going to make Arkin much, much safer, I would say. Um, let's go ahead and get another Catapult moving up and just get it in position. Arkin has taken down this character, and we do have the Shopti Bows on the right targets now. We've dove these archers pretty effectively, and um, let's get these Nehekar horsemen to just, like, lurk back. All right, so he's just chilling there. It's fine. We got you. Let's go ahead and just finish him off if we can. We don't want to get way Uh Value is pretty close. He does have healing, and I don't, maybe? Does he have healing in this build? I don't actually know. Yeah, let's go ahead and keep chasing here. And um, Arkin is still hunting his prey. Uh, let's go back. We can't, like, have Arkin, like, just doing nothing, like, for the large majority of this game, right? So let's get these cavalry back. We're going to need some good quality infantry up on the points here. It looks like Dryads are going to make a play for the middle. So let's move you guys over and get you guys to engage against these Eternal Guard right here. And yeah, see, so that's the problem with like letting that character live, right? Is we, we potentially get sniped. So let's get back in the trees because that's how we lose this game is if we lose Arkin. So we need to be very cautious about that. 
All right, so value trading is pretty okay. It, it could be worse. And um, Skeleton Warriors, let's get the archer shooting here. We're going to need a little bit more cap weight, though. So let's get the, uh, the good old infantry up. And we have a couple of you guys on the wings. Let's charge into the dryads. And back here, we're, we're chilling. Arkin is getting hunted in the bushes. We have a spear unit coming after him, I think. Uh, what do we want to shoot with the great bows? Yeah, probably these glade riders would be fine. Let's pull back, and um, you guys can come here. Spear's hanging out. He's got the uh, advantage on the objectives, which is a little bit dodgy. I definitely don't like that. Let's get you intercepting these guys. And we do have another Nehekar horseman we can, or another horseman we can call in for defense here. So yeah, we need the catapults to bombard over the course of a long game to get us back in this. Because he definitely has control over the objectives, you know. He definitely does. Uh, I hate to do this, but we're... Oh, those are war dancers. Okay, I actually don't hate to do this then. That, that feels pretty good. So we're going to be into those guys under the Shadow Realm. And uh, hunt you guys down. And get you guys here. Yes, and you guys come back here and defend that. And let's get you horsemen over there. So those guys should get Bunod off the map by Arkin, which is going to be good. We still have a couple Bone Daddies grinding here and there, and let's get some Skeleton Horsemen to come and deal with those. All right, so the Buna there was actually very cost-effective. And um, the Ushapti Bows, let's go ahead and just turn here and shoot. Great. Kepra Guard are on their way to the middle, and his Lord is cackling about. Uh, we just kind of focus on the Cavalry, I think, and trying to crew a value lead. It's still very early in the game, so I'm not, like, thinking that I'm in huge danger yet. But let's get some... Uh, we could go double Skeleton Archer and try and press his back objective, actually. That's kind of a cute idea. I don't hate that. All right, so we're going to move through the trees there with those guys. Hopefully it works out for us. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. We're going to we're gonna try and make it work. And, um, yeah, we do have the Bow Shopti in combat here. We got you right there. So let's just kind of get the Kepra Guard involved in combat here, I think, is going to be good. And we just retreat with you. All right, so they've been dealt with. Let's go ahead and bombard here. Um, this catapult is offline, so we need to just unsummon it at this point, and the Tomb Guard are trying. Bow Shopti should do okay in combat there. We could actually go for a cheese on his lord. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go for that Waystalker there. That's not going to be a bad one. Yeah, so we're going to Spirit Leech that bad boy, and we're going to get a surround here on this force. And uh, we get the Spirit Leech off, which is great. And then we get a full surround on those cavalry there, which is going to be super money. And um, in the meantime, he does, he does see that. So we're just going to pull these guys back and use them defensively. Uh, unfortunately, ooh, he gets a little sneaky sneaky here, but we do have another Nehekar horseman, so shouldn't be too much of a problem. All right, so the Waystalker is almost down. Let's go ahead and do the shield here to mitigate any damage coming in. Good. And pull you guys down this way. Uh, catapult, yeah, we really need to keep that thing online. It's one of the big breadwinners we have, but that big blob fight there was pretty good. Pretty good. He calls in a skirmish cavalry unit. Okay, Boshopti can shoot the Lord. Let's see if we can kill the Lord now, too. Maybe, maybe we got something. I don't know. Yeah, him taking this fight here is a little bit dangerous for him, for sure. Uh, these guys can move up and, and shoot here. And we're going to go for the Arkin hunting. Yeah, let's go ahead and Spirit Leech down this character to make sure it doesn't come back and cause havoc. Uh, those are Sisters of Thorn, so we can use Nehekar Horseman to actually fight them, and then we can shoot them here. Um, Arkin able to get in and do some work, and he can do a Skeleton Summon right here, and then we just use that to get on top of the Archer. So we took down that character, which is great. So that's a, that's a big win for us. So let's pull back, and um, do we have anything else that's fast we can call in? I guess we have a Chariot. Yeah, Chariots do have 80 armor, so let's just throw that in front of these guys and see how this goes. Yeah, this Blob Fight will eventually go our way. We're probably going to be up on value here. Uh, we can go ahead and Buna down these Blade Riders and attack here and attack here as well. These Nehekar Horsemen can uh, pull back and surround these Sisters of Thorn. And the Bow Shop D need to uh, stabilize here. All right, so his army's very tattered, guys. It's very, very beat up. But so is mine, right? But that Buna there does wreck those like cavalry, which is excellent. All right. So let's get you guys in group one. We're kind of running a little bit light on time, though. You know, that's the, the dodgy thing here for sure. Let's do this and have Ark of the Black go after the Cav. And we can go ahead and do a shield of the old ones here. All right. Let's get the chariots to run in and just start running over some infantry wherever we can. The Bow Shopti have stabilized, which is great. So we'll shoot the Sisters of Thorn. And um, I feel like we need another catapult, but we're kind of like... Getting pressed pretty good right now, so I don't think we could afford to call in more artillery, right? Kepra Guard are making their way through, um, and the missiles here are doing good. Yeah, he's trying to dive in. We're going to get another Skeleton Horseman. Ark of the Black needs to keep working on them. We can Spirit Leech those Sisters of Thorn, as a matter of fact. Uh, chariots, let's call the Chariots over to run over these uh, Eternal Guard, and that Catapult needs to get back. Sloppy, sloppy on my part. All right, so let's run up, and Kepra Guard are still grinding through the lines. We're going to get a big Infantry Space Jam on this side. Uh, Arkin does not have a summon at the moment, which is unfortunate, but um, hopefully these guys will be able to fend off these Eternal Guard. Let's see. And you go down here. And uh, all right, so let's get on these. Arkin is here in the blob. Uh, we do get a big amount of damage on those bad boys. The catapult was stabilized, which is great. So let's hammer these. You guys fight here. And uh, is it time for another catapult, Colin? I think it is. We're going to probably be caught in a triple cap situation here, unfortunately. 
But the Kepler Guard and our like undead resilience might lead to us getting this. It's going to be really, really tight. It's going to be really, really tight. All right. So, yeah, the Chariot runs through. His army's looking pretty beat, honestly. We might just be able to overwhelm him here with the Catapult Firepower. We might be able to. Let's shoot those Eternal Guard, and um, let's go ahead and shoot these Archers for now. The back point is looking more or less secure. And now Arkin needs to just win this fight. We need him to win that one pretty badly here. All right, so the Bow Shop D can go help Arkin. Uh, looks like he's going to try and get to my Catapult, so we're going to go guard that with the Skeletons here. Do I still have my Chariots? I do. Great. So this is this is really money. We can just like run through all these like tattered-ass infantry and just hopefully take them down. Uh, as far as Collins go, I think we just need to get more like capture weight up to the point while we still have some time. Great. So that those guys are all getting routed. Um, we're going to get you up to the point soon. Ark in the Black is taking down this character, this War Dancer, and the Lord. I don't know where the Lord is, but we're going to go ahead and guard that back here. Those guys are grinding. We got Kepra Guard. You guys pull back. Let's get you in here. Yes. And then you Chariots go run this way. Uh, catapult shoot there, catapult shoots here into the war dancers with the Azurai spears. The character is basically dead. And we do get sloppy on defending this one here. So he might get that one. He might like fully wipe it out. I'm not sure, but you know, at the very least, we can probably get up there and do something. So the cap weight's coming back to us here. The Kepper Guard are just absolute linebackers. Um, we do have a spirit leech for you, so let's do that. And then we can go do a summon on top of them as well. Uh, anything else we want to do? Not really. I think we're okay. Yeah, we're getting some good charges there. Arkin needs to watch out, so we're going to go ahead and drop a summon on top of them. Perfect. And then we can attack there. I don't know how that fight goes. Maybe Arkin wins it. Maybe he doesn't. But we're going to go call a little bit of help for him. And um, the back catapult is still very much online, which is great. So looks like he's making some plays for my back point, so I should probably reinforce that too with some good infantry. So we're going to do that. I need you to win this fight, Arkin. You're, you're, you're a mighty Tomb King of Nehekara. You, you better win this one. All right, so Kepper Guard, move in. Oh, we're running out of time. It's getting real dodgy here. If I can get his Lord, though, that's going to be pretty nice. All right, so up on the point you go. Arkin up on the point, and um, we do have our horsemen swarming. Let's get that Waystalker if we can, and get you guys moving up, and um, get another horseman coming, too. We just need to get, like, all the speed we can up on these points, right? All right, so let's get fighting against the Dryads. Arkin's going to have a Skeleton Summon soon. Let's move you up on the point here. And uh, the Catapult's still shooting away quite well. Yeah, let's get those healthy Dryads. Uh, these Spears can do this, and we'll just get a full surround on them and try and knock them down. Let's fight here. We might have a summon soon. It's going to be a little dodgy. We might have one. Yeah, you guys need to hustle up to that damn point already. You guys go here, and I think we're going to be okay on the side point. I don't think there's going to be too much of a threat, so let's just run down these Eternal Guard right here. Arkin is in a pit fight right now. He's going to get a summon in a while. Yeah, it's still a ways off. All right, so those guys have gotten this, and um, he's obviously going to start reinforcing his back point here, so let's get a single cavalry unit, a Nehekar horseman, to go up here and start working on that. All right, so we got that. Perfect. Maybe, maybe we can kill his lord here, although Arkin might get surrounded and killed. Oh, it's rough, man. It's rough. All right, come on, boy. Come on, Arkin. Get out of there, buddy. Get out of there, little buddy. He's trying, and um, yeah, we need to just, we need to get a skeleton summon here, but I think Arkin's going to die. I think he just barely gets it. If we had more time, we'd probably edge it out, just based on value, but he held them long enough that it was it was uh, able to get the job done. We're going to go for a ninja on his back point, though. It's probably too late. Yeah, Arkin's dying here in the blob. There's a lot of spears. Uh, if he can live long enough to get a skeleton summon, that'd be pretty fat, but I don't think that's going to be the case. And also, he's got the mobility on my back point, so GG well played. Really good match. It's a, it's one I need to practice more. I think more Boshopti. Boshopti felt really good. Let's get you to the back point here. Um, Kepra Guard are still grinding very well. Let's get these Tomb Guard fighting there. Like eventually we kill that middle point and probably stabilize the back point, but I don't think it's gonna matter too much. Uh, we should win this fight here. Glade Riders do lose the Nehakara Warriors, and especially if we throw in like a Carrion or something, maybe. How are we looking on the middle? GG, well played. It was a really good game. It's a hard matchup. Again, Woodup players are, are very, very tough to play for sure, especially he's on his main. I'm certainly not on my main right now. Got got much to improve. Uh, yeah, Waystalker's back there. It's going to take the Waystalker like 10 years. So Arkin was good. Um, yeah, I think he was pretty damn solid. I don't really have any complaints about old Arkin. Um, yeah, we got the middle one, but it's just not going to be enough. See, we're like pretty close to threatening all three objectives. Like this one, the middle will eventually probably go to the Kepra Guard, although he does have me surrounded pretty good there. Yeah, GG well played, dude. He played really well. What a beast. All right, GG, uh, Tomb Kings versus Wood. So the good thing is, even if he, we play him, he's likely, he won the last tournament. So if he goes three and three and zero after this, then our odds of making the top four are actually really, really good. Yeah, really good.
He's very good at Wood Elves. He's the, probably the best player in the community on them. GG, well played. GG, well played. Close one. All right, let me see some of the... Uh, all right. Checking, checking. All right, so players are getting their matches in. Let's see what it looks like on Old Total Tavern in terms of the tournament progress. And let's go down here. All right, so where are we at? Tomb Kings feel really good, though, honestly. They feel real good. I, I like them a lot. I just think I need to learn the builds. The Skeleton Archers were good. I almost think more of them in the beginning. They were like, you know, uh, not much value, though. They kind of just got shut down. Maybe I was wrong about them. I felt like they, they got some good shots into the Light Armor. So maybe we cut the Skeleton Archers and we just get Bow Shopty instead. The Bow Shopty, look at the value on this guy. Uh, Bone Giant could be good. Yeah, but he didn't have any SEs for me to shoot at. So the Bone Giant would have just been kind of whatever, right? So this can be something we can do after every game is if we don't have success in a game, we'll kind of do a bit of a Tomb King's guide while we're playing this and like fine tune our builds and everything. All right. And where are we at? So checking the tournament and let's go to the brackets. Okay. So he's going to report the score. Here's the brackets for now. So we got uh, three, four, yeah, five games are going to be finished. I have no idea what happened here between Moose Lord and Pasha. Uh, did somebody get added to the event without, how's that possible? Because that was a buy round in the beginning. So let me double check that real quick. Okay, one second, guys. Okay. Hey, man, did somebody add you to the event post game because the problem is if you add somebody to the event to a swiss event afterwards it can it can create a crash where you can't advance the tournament so you're not supposed to be able to do that to swiss uh you only get one who shopped you summon yeah you don't get two of them unless it's a bug you're only supposed to have one tim garden heck are warriors to have cap weight yeah i think so i think so I did like the Skeleton Horseman Archers. I felt like they gave me some nice utility on the battlefield. Um, I think we just go for the regular Bow Shopty, though. Like, a double Bow Shopty opening feels pretty good. Just for getting that initiative on my opponent. You know, that initial jump. Um, and then from there, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the Chariots were kind of cute, but probably just going for more Nehekar Warriors would be the way. Just to get the capture weight. Yeah, all right. So we'll fine-tune this. Let me just do this. Um... Okay. Who else is a host in our event that would have added this player? Because Icer is held in it. Okay, one sec here. Just checking, and let's see this. If it crashes the whole event, that would definitely be a bummer. Did he check in? It says he did. I could have sworn he didn't have that. That's very strange. All right, let's check the buy round. Nonetheless, we'll work on a build until I get an answer from those guys. Okay, so double bow shop the opening with skeleton chaff. Um, maybe we just get another tomb guard unit as our core. So we have those guys be like our front and center with two skeleton spears, and then we can get King Akesh's scorpion legion. Uh, the, my will be done is, I guess, okay. The curse is not like super impactful. So I think this for our opening, and I do like the double catapults. I felt like the catapults were one of the best elements. Probably cut this. Eyes of the Desert seem a little bit too slow to deal with Wood Elf Cavalry. So I think we cut those. And then do we go for another Bow Shopty in the back? Like the triple of the Bow Shopty seemed really devastating, but maybe, what about Casket of Souls? Casket of Souls in theory, probably the way Stalker snipe it too easy, I think would be the problem with that. Yeah, the Kepra Guard did fine. They they got good value for me at the end, but no shield is, but they, they were like a late call in once the missiles, because I shut down all of his missiles, more or less. Uh... Let's see. Who would have who would have added that player? It's very, very strange. I, I just hope it doesn't cause a tournament crash. Kepper Guard is risky against, yeah. I think as a secondary column unit, I still like the Kepper Guard. Uh, the double bow shop to here I like. I like this opening. I think it's very clean. Um, Arkin or Kotep. I think Arkin's better. The Bunas and the Spirit Leeches were extremely clutch. Like, we killed this, basically two Waystalkers with Arkin um, after that initial kind of uh, pop he got on us. Yeah, so that's good. As far as other elements go, we got 1,800 to play with here. Necropolis Knights, I think, are just too haggard. I think they'll just get like picked apart and trade poorly again to the Stag Knights, so you probably don't mess with those. Regular Ushapti, he's got too many pointy sticks, uh, too many spears. Between the War Dancers and the basic variants, I think we just need to go probably go more of these. 
Yeah, maybe more just max out on those Nakar Warriors. Because we, we kind of shut down like most of the shooting. So if we could have just gotten sustained fighting in play, we might have been okay. And then I think finding a way to get another Nakar Horseman, they're just so damn good, is going to be um, optimal. So this would probably be our adjusted build. Uh, double Bow Shafti. Like, this Bow Shafti is probably going to pay for itself, right? Like, my Skeleton Archers, not a single one of them paid for itself. So I think that that is the way. So let's actually save this. And if we do end up running into them again in the later rounds, then we'll have that ready. So we're going to do this as the TK versus Wood Elves. Wood. All right. Great. So that build should be saved now. Let's double check. I don't really have build saved for Tomb Kings, I don't think. Yeah, that's my first Tomb Kings build I've saved. I have them um, for Empire and Chaos and a lot of the other factions. Added you. It may cause a bracket crash. I'm trying to see who uh, who added them here, so I can talk to them and make sure. Typically, if someone can try to advance it. All right, so we'll see if we can still advance it um, and make it work. We will see, my friends. Uh, I'm going to need to fix this, so let's check. Okay, so rounds are still going. So we have a handful of games still ready. Okay. But I do like this. I think this build's going to be a little bit cleaner, for sure. Should start with only skeleton warriors and tons of chariots and try to break his front line. Uh, that, that works better. In, mm, it, it works okay. I think that using the superior range is better. It worked very well for us, but our skeleton archers were the... The reason we were up on value, right? The reason we lost that was because of capture weight. We didn't have enough frontal pressure. We were um, mostly skeleton warriors. I, I agree with some of the analysis from chat that if we have more Nekar warriors than Tomb Guard, we do a lot better in that situation. Tomb Scorpions are, are an interesting one. I feel like they're just weird. Like they don't connect very well. But yeah, you could throw in like a Tomb Scorpion. Um, like I could see a Tomb Scorpion not yeah getting mixed in there just for like a source of terror in the front line. So in the late game you can like you know push them off, and we could just do like this and this or something. Yeah, I don't know. I think Nakar Warriors lose to Dryads. I think they do. Okay. If it doesn't crash the events, we can keep him. So. All right. So, we should be okay with this individual being added. We're going to try and advance it when the time comes. Our Kislev band, yeah, Kislev's super OP. They're very OP. What else have ITP, so it's not worth it? Uh, they have ITP on, yeah, a fair amount of their units. I agree that the Tomb Scorpion's like a risky tech. So, let's look at the Wood Elf roster. Wood Elves are hard to play, by the way. Like, they're not easy. So Eternal Guard do not have ITP. War Dancers have immune to psychology. Yeah, so that's going to be kind of crappy. So the Tomb Scorpion will just be dog shit against War Dancers, which is what he had a lot of too. And Dryads are also ITP, but theirs I think is based on Frenzy. Oh, no, no, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. So too much ITP on the Wood Elf roster for that to actually work. Um, all right. Let's do this. Fix that. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, all right. Refresh. I take triple turrets into Serkia in this matchup. It's very funny. Yeah, the chariots, uh, we had one chariot, and it did okay. But Wood Elf Light Cavalry are pretty good at stopping your Tomb King's chariots. Although it depends. If you have good micro, maybe you could get away with it. I don't know if I, like... Yeah, what what could you throw in here? Like another chariot or something? Yeah, just one, and then you could you could cut this. What are they, 850? You could go double chariot. That's like another tech as well. Maybe if you're on like a big open map. Yeah, Tomb Scorpions are really bad. They're really, really bad. Like, uh, a lot of the Tomb Kings, the Tomb Kings have a lot of really good stuff, and then they have some really terrible stuff. Like, the Tomb Scorpions are really haggard, their, their Necropolis Knights are pretty bad, Cameron War Sphinx, uh, Iroh Titan, Necro Sphinx is okay. That thing can be situationally decent. Oh god, dude, Kislev is brutal. Yeah, Pwn, you weren't the last one, buddy. Not today. So let's take a look. Uh, how do you think Kairos will be with the loss of regrowth? So, that's mainly a land battle thing. Nobody, in Dom, like, you often don't see Kairos even getting used. Because here's the thing, right? So let's say I'm playing in a land battle match. And I'm just some degenerate ladder player, okay? 
Um, let me do this. The reason why Kairos was so busted with, with regrowth and his other tricks is because... Uh, let me find him on here. There he is. All right. Yeah, see, he lost it. He doesn't have regrowth anymore. Uh, it's because he has not he has the lore of death passive, right? So every time he casts a spell, he's getting 2.5 wins of magic. On top of that, he does have more WOM recharge. Yeah, he has this. He has the scroll of destiny. So this one is giving him 0. 0.40 um, for 46 seconds, which is pretty insane. That gives him a ton of wins of magic. And um, yeah, so he's just getting a shit ton of wins of magic, and he could really, really, in a long grindy game, uh, get a, a ton of WOM in land battle. So he could like, you know, if you're if you're abusing shields and barely like you're using one or two Marauder Horsemen to obey the attacking rule while spell cheesing with Kairos, uh, that, that feels pretty bad because he's just never going to run out of Winds of Magic. Yeah, Necropolis Knights are pretty terrible. They're probably good in tabletop from what I've seen, but, um, you know, time will tell. Time will tell. All right, all right. Yeah, and the Zinch Army ability can also give you WOM as well. It's true. So yeah, it's just pretty insane. But in Dom, it doesn't really matter. The game just kind of ends, and he doesn't have enough time to cheese. Uh, so, like, no, this has this is just a pure land battle change. So somebody at CA, thankfully, uh, does care about land battle as well. Um, but, yeah, Zinch is, like, if you look at the win rate, Zinch isn't even that good in Dom. They're okay. They're, like, a mid-tier faction. So let's scroll down and find this. Like, yeah. So could we have Kislev is, like, uh, the highest... Uh, the Kislev's win rate would be higher if we let them be played, but they've just been kind of limited for the past couple tournaments, so it hasn't happened. Uh, Norska, Lizardmen, Dwarves, Wood Elves are actually doing really well too. I think that's mainly because of Serkia. I think he's carrying them. He's playing in like every event. He's just winning with them, so. Uh, but yeah, it's looking better. We allowed Greenskins today too, by the way, and I don't know if anybody even picked them because I feel like Greenskins, I don't know. Their win rate wasn't that crazy, and... Um, yeah, they, they, they were allowed today. Slanesh is doing okay. Um, Vampire counts 50-50. Bounce is honestly looking decent in some regards. Like, all this stuff is probably fine. Empire is fine, too. You just don't have top players playing them right now. And Chaos Storms probably are a little weird. Warriors of Chaos, yeah. Skaven, Grand Cathay, and Chaos Demons. I don't understand why Grand Cathay is doing so badly. They, they seem strong to me, but I don't understand that. The Knights are good anti-infantry shredders in tabletop, yeah. In the old world, you're saying? Okay. So let's check the tournament, see where we're sitting today. And we got two matches yet to finish. Please, for the love of God, don't crash the brackets. Because if it does, we would have to remove the player we added. And that feels bad. So I don't know why Grand Cathay is sucking. Yeah, the Patriarch getting his item removed is, is a nice change. It will certainly nerf one style of Kislev's play. But Kislev is just... The, the things they got, right? Like, the fact that all their cavalry got this freaking heroic, glorious charge ability is insane, right? So the duration of their charge bonus is doubled. Absolutely nuts. On top of that, when they take a, le they take a leadership penalty as if they've been hit in the flank. So Kissel of Cavalry are just so sauce now after that change, okay? On top of that, I mean, they just have so many good units. And now they have a cheap halberd unit, which is unbreakable, basically, and extremely cost-effective. Um, their missiles are all good. Their cavalry are... Honestly, some of the best in the entire game now. Uh, they have just they just kind of do everything the best. You know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, Tarbanath. Hey, Taran, I've been a fan of yours for uh, making a Warhammer series from your videos. Uh, how is Scarbrand ranked competitively? Thanks for all the content. Uh, Scarbrand is, is decent. He's actually pretty okay. Because the thing about Scarbrand is he's got Rampage, right? So Rampage doesn't require any conditions anymore. Um, and he has a Rampage which lasts for, you know, 15 seconds, which isn't bad. And considering how much of a world beater he is, you can use Rampage and just pop Wrathful Reaper, uh, which will Rampage him too. But if he has the target isolated, he's going to kill really, really quickly, right? So that's crazy, crazy strong. Uh, I think Scarbrand is good. I think him and Valkia are both kind of decent, different matchups. So I think when Korn eventually gets some milk, you'll see Scarbrand be good because Scarbrand's ability to Rampage and kill targets is insane. I ran the Knights this past weekend and they butchered through two blocks of Chaos Warriors. Really nice. That's awesome. Uh, have you had any success, Kyle, with the Sepulchral Stalkers? I built my Necropolis Knights as Sepulchral Stalkers. I felt like they would be cool, but I feel like they're just kind of haggard. We'll have to see. Can have all the makings of Var Kislev does have all the makings of a varsity athlete for sure. All right. So please don't crash. We got two games to finish. What time do we start at? One o'clock? Started at like 105. All right. So Ulrich are all taking his time here. Let's see. I'm going to shoot him a warning here. Two minute warning. All right, all right. We literally had people show up late and they uh, they still finish before him. So him and Bongo down there. 
Yeah, I think Corn should get a Slaughter Priest type character, like a cast, someone that's like a dwarf rune smith, right? Like where they can get ruins. King Franz, hey Taren, what is your? Uh, uh, shoot me a message in Discord, and I can give you all those details. Yeah, that'd be a little bit easier than going over it all here. Uh, you need to return championing demons since they're at the bottom. We have a demon player playing today who's very good. Leech Lord is um, has been one of our top leaderboard players for the past couple seasons, and he's playing demons today. So I think, uh, I think yeah, I think they'll do fine. I think he's going to win some games today. Uh, Taren just confirmed in a ladder match that Grimgore does in fact spank Archeon. Um, so I think Archeon still beats Grimgore if he uses all of his stuff. Let's check, because Archeon has... Yeah, if you have him fully kitted out, I'm pretty sure Archie wins. He's just got so much stuff. And he, like the Slayer of Kings, Slamming Sword, Spirit Leech. I can't see how Grimgore could possibly beat Archeon in a fight. Yeah, I don't see how that's possible. Okay, so double checking this. Are we ready to advance to the next round? Come on, Ulrich. No, oh, they're still playing. How are you still playing? Must be a lag thing. Yeah. The stalkers were decent in eighth. In the older world, they're so expensive for what you get. The ammo is nice, but then overall rather a Shopti. Yeah. I have um I have double bow Shopti in my Tomb Kings list in Old World. So there's two Shopti great bows, which are really good, because they still have really good melee prowess with their hand weapons because of the Kopesh rule. So they, they still have armor piercing. Uh and you know, the the great bows themselves hit like trucks. What are the map settings? So, um, are you talking for the Domination Tournament, or just in general? Yeah. Let me know. Yeah, it was one of my armies for old Slanesh in the previous tournament. This is what we run. Ultra and unit caps, you know. I don't know why character loading's on. It should be turned off, but... but yeah, more or less like this. More or less like this. Yeah, Skull Crushers and Blood Crushers are a little bit haggard. The only time you can really get good value out of them is to surprise your opponent with armor while you're playing demons. So people often index into anti-light when you're playing against demons of chaos. And if you just whip out a couple skull crushers real quick, the um, they have armor. They have 100 armor. So people can be surprised by that and be like, oh shit, I don't have enough armor, right? So so that can be something. Hey Nick, how you doing, man? Been loving your head-to-head -head multiplayer campaigns. I know, I gotta get, I gotta get back to doing those. Yeah. Well, I kept using your next. My opponent didn't seem to have Spirit Leech, so he's at a disadvantage. Got it. How are Beastmen currently? Beastmen are really good. Uh, for playing Beastmen, and this is a great time for questions, by the way, in between matches while we're waiting. Some rounds will be quicker, but for Beastmen, I think you have some great lore choices. Morgur is very good. Uh, Malagor is very good. Um, great Bray Shaman is incredibly solid. Torox is niche. I wouldn't say he's good, but the top three would be Morgur, Great Bray, and Malagor. Not in that order, but just the top three. Torox is viable, uh, Doom Bull is viable, Kazrak and the Beast Lord are both awful. You don't ever want to bring them if you're trying to win. Um, so yeah, you don't you don't want to do that. But Scar Scarbrand with Gore Feast be too much? I don't think so, man. I think Corn needs some serious um, serious milk. Yeah, double Corn Soul Grinder. That's Pwn's forbidden strategy. All right, so they should report this now. All right. Okay, report score. All righty. So So I think he finished, or maybe he reported the score. Let's see. Yeah, it should be fine. So we'll just do a drop here. Okay. When are you bringing back 4v4s? So I'll be recording some. Um, I'm going to be out of town for the next couple days. Yeah, our Discord's a great place for uh, training. It is. So, all right. So let's go ahead and drop you now. Cool. So just doing a drop. Then we should be able to advance. And all right. There we go. So let's advance the Swiss to the next round. And here we go. Please work. We added someone late. Sometimes it screws up the brackets a little bit. Let's see. Nope, it worked like a charm. All right, still got it, baby. Okay, so I'm playing Fidel Flash Flood here. Okay, let's get it, man. Good luck, have fun. Let's find you. I know you're in Discord somewhere. Uh, next round is live. Have fun. 
So we gotta we gotta go try hard here though. Since we lost our first game, the okay thing is the person we lost to it was a not only was it a close game, but he's also likely gonna win his next three games. So it's a good tiebreaker for us. Yeah, it's a good tiebreaker for us. All right, so top four, so goblins. Yeah, our Discord is an excellent place for finding uh, round is live for players to play with of all skill levels. So what is this map going to be? Next up, we have the Border Low Landing, one of my favorite maps, by the way. The Border Low Landing. All right, let's see what Rat in a Cage is playing, a.k.a. Fidel. And we're going to be on our beloved Tomb Kings. Hey, turn. I played a lot of land battles and wondered what tips you have from going to land battle to Dom. Uh, it's pretty different beast, honestly. If you join Discord, uh, we have like, we have threads. We have like basically a forum within our Discord where people can give you just excellent advice. Excellent advice. So I would join up and chat there. But it's a different beast. If you are coming from more of a traditional RTS background, Dom is a little bit more familiar. Because Domination has many principles of RTS, like uh, unit composition, countering, you know, there's a little bit less build roulette. Um, it's a bit of a slower paced battle than land battle. Land battles can tend to be, although I don't know if that's even true. Just message me in Discord and I'll give you, I'll give you some tips, man. Uh, so we're playing Lizards here. All right. I actually, yeah, I don't know this matchup. Let's see what we do here, man. We're going to have some fun with it. Yeah, all right. All right. Let's get it. Let's have some fun. Let's get the army blocker up. They're both good, good game modes. I, I personally prefer Dom for uh, for um, competitive because I think that you know having to uh, enforce those rules is tough. The Rat in a Cage. He's not playing Corn. No, he's playing Lizardmen. So he he appears to be uh, bringing the lizards out. Cetra could be interesting here on the Big Sphinx. I think he's a little bit too easy to kill. So it's uh, it's it's a scary one. All right, let's call you and you in. All right. So likely going to be Croxagore spam, I would say, is going to be the, the tech. Yeah, we're going to see some scary Croxagores. Okay. We got you guys. And for the Lord choice here, this could be an Arkan game. Kotep is also pretty good. Uh, Cetra on a horse could be a cool tech, actually, against like uh, against um, like Croxagore spam and things like that. The Crown of Nehakara, that's not bad. It does give some nice damage buffs and things like that. All right, so this and this looks fine. And then we can cut that off, and that's yeah, good, and probably get rid of that too. We're going to do something fun. Uh, are people playing Dowie? Oh, absolutely. I think we have two or three Dowie players in today's event. Dowie are a very good faction. They're like, uh, they're, they're top tier contenders, for sure. Okay, so aside from this, let's go ahead and try this Forbidden Tech out. I think I have a little Forbidden Tech here. So we cut that yeah, cut that yeah that's pretty good doesn't have necessarily the best ap though so i don't know if that's going to be my best friend here i almost think an acropolis knight halberd wouldn't be terrible in this matchup a croxagore a boner giant might not also not be bad like a double boner giant opening could be formidable um because boner giant against like croxagores seems like a respectable thing yeah it doesn't seem bad at all and then nekar warriors into like skinks and croxagores that's yeah, probably okay Probably not going to go for double boner giant though. You still testing these line battle with one dom point? Yeah, it's a fun format. It's a fun one. Yeah. yeah all right, cool man. So I'm trying to bring something uh, a little bit different, but also potentially decent. We're going to see how he does here. And uh, as far as everything else goes here, I think you're good. I think that's a fair amount of DPS. God, I wish the Titan was good, man. I really do wish the Titan was like a little bit better. That would be so nice. That'd be so nice. It tries its best, but it just uh, it just doesn't quite get there, you know. All right, so we'll call you in. I think that's a decent one against these bad boys. A lot of light armor for us to uh, have some fun with. The Boner Giant. Do we really need the Boner Giant? Yeah, Boner Giant's always fun, man. Oh, man. I, I don't know. I'm on the fence. It's got to be a surprise. The first time watching Attorney, do you have to stick with one faction? So this one is a single faction tournament, Aussie. Um, so it is you pick one faction and play them the whole the way through, all the way through. This is a better tournament format for like newer and intermediate players um, because it's it's a little bit less overwhelming. There's no pick and ban process, and you also don't need to know how to play a bunch of factions. Like if you're like a new multiplayer guy, but let's say you're super good at one faction, you can come in and compete right away, which is very fun. Yeah, which is very fun. 
Yeah, Skaven are weak in both land battle as well as Dom. Yeah. Yeah, Corn is pretty bad in, in Dom right now, but they're it's gonna be they're gonna be bad for a while. But when they do eventually get some milk, I think I think people will be excited for sure. Uh, I don't know about Ushapti here. I don't know if I'm a big enjoyer of the Ushapti, the melee Shopti. Um, maybe they're okay. Maybe, maybe. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. All right, so we got three of those. And then aside from this, we can afford that. And then we can afford one more, maybe. Oh, God. All right. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Good luck. Have fun to my opponent. Let's see how this goes. I'm bringing a cool lord just for you guys. I normally wouldn't bring this one. But um, I'm bringing a very cool lord here. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, always approve of the boner giant. The boner giants are ferocious, dude. Just fat shafts in your face. What's not to love? I keep putting up breaking into multiplayer scene. I know. There, so what I've um, what I've been trying to do is I've been poking CA about... This is my power fantasy. It's likely not to happen, but I've been poking CA about it. Since such a small percentage of the player base of Total War plays, you know, plays campaign only, it's something like 98% or something, right? What if they just made all the factions free for multiplayer? Okay, so not only will it create a thriving multiplayer community and scene, making the ease of access for competitive play much better, but it also serves as like a taste tester for campaign, right? So if you're looking like, hey, I want to play Chaos Surfs and campaign, but I don't know if I'm going to like their units and how they play, you can go into custom battles with your buddies and play. And it's only like 1% or 2% of the player base that even plays multiplayer. It's very small. Um, I think it would have a big effect because it would increase multiplayer's popularity in terms, and it's multiplayer is often more viewed than campaign in terms of like marketing materials. Um, so like, I think from a business perspective, it makes sense for them. I don't know if it'll ever happen. It probably is just going to get bogged down in uh, you know, bureaucracy and nonsense, but I, I legit think that would make them make us, it would be a win-win. We as the multiplayer community would thrive and they would also probably end up doing better too. I don't think it would hurt them. Yeah, I really don't. Uh, yeah, the Lore of Nehakar is kind of carried by the Lore Passive, but it's still not bad. Like, this spell is quite good. Curse Blades, you can give Anti-Large to a unit by overcasting it, and Jaffs is really good too, or Narrows. 40% Fizz Res is quite nice. So, um, so yeah, that's my two cents. I've been trying, I've been trying to push it. I've been trying. Yeah, that's been my, my jam. All right, so I think what we'll do is we'll send one Tomb Guard over to the side point here with a Spear. I'll just kind of go hold that, and then we'll just kind of fight over the side, the, the middle here, right? It's going to be the plan. Deep set, deep set, Boshapti, and Boshapti. The big thing with Boshapti is making sure you keep them deep set. And yeah, I brought your boy Setra. Not going to happen with CA. Uh, so ladder, what ladder needs to do is, I think, just remove... If they remove the ladder itself, the, the ranking system, so it looks less like dog shit, that'd be a good starter. And secondly, I think if they just add new maps, it could go a long way. Um, and then, you know, CA could even... There's other game companies which have done integrations with community platforms. So um, whatever land battle platform there is, I don't know if anybody's made a website for land battle stuff, but they could like link to that and they could link to Total Tavern. So then players could be fed into the multiplayer circuit that way. Um, yeah. Well, StarCraft did that. You know, StarCraft has done that. StarCraft is free to play. You just have to pay for the campaign, basically. Um, and it, it really is not even going to... People play this game for campaign, mostly. Um, there's a very passionate niche multiplayer scene, but uh, yeah, it's mostly for campaign. So let's move here. We got our boy Setra. Setra's on horseback. I figure on his Sphinx, he's a bit too big of a target. And what's nice is on horseback, he's got anti-large, so... If there's some scary dinosaur for him to fight, we're going to be able to get in and, you know, just have him help with croc scores or something is my game plan. So uh, we got a bone giant. We got, you know, a fair amount of units here in reserve to call in. Not sure what we're going to be doing, but should be fun. Uh, they would need a new engine. Oh, uh, yeah. Shooting total war. I mean, you've seen how rattling gunners work, right? Like rattling gunners and hand gunners. I mean, shooting wouldn't be that big of an issue, in my opinion. I've, I've, uh, okay, Rev Crystal. So probably Rev Crystal with um, Tehenowin. Is it going to be Lizard Moses? That could be an idea. Uh, Bo Shopti are pretty good against those big dinos. A little bit of lag here. Hopefully it will subside. I need to make sure Setra doesn't take any free damage. So let's go hide him behind some trees or keep him behind the skeletons for now. 
Bone says, may Asurian forgive me for the build I brought? Yeah. All right. So what does he got? He's got a Bastillon on Rev Crystal, Lord Chungamundi, who's going to be hiding behind the pillar, which makes sense. Thankfully, we have a good anti-large fighter, um, so it's not going to be the end of the world. We'll also get a Bone Giant call out. If he has more big dinos, definitely going to get a Bone Giant. Uh, I think we'll just call a Boner Giant in. Doesn't look like he's going to press me too hard, so I think we're okay. So let's get you guys, like so, up on the objective. And the Ushapti can sit back. And we'll get these Ushapti here. And these ones can just... Honestly, shooting at Saurus isn't like a bad feel at all. That's going to be kind of nice. So we're going to start blasting at some Ushapti and call out a Bone Giant. Let's get the Bone Giant in range. And if he even moves his Dinosaurs into the open, we're just going to gat them down. All right. So you get you and you. And you guys can start shooting at the Ushapti here. Or excuse me, the Saurus. And oh, those are Temple Guard. That's even better. All right. Talk about Value City. And the Bone Giant's going to be on its way up. Um, is he going to try and push into my backfield? I'm not sure. If he does, we're ready for it, I think. We're going to have a lot of capture weight. You immediately see big shots coming. And he can hide behind the pillar with a fair amount of stuff, but it's going to be hard for him to hide everything. So we're going to move this way. And uh, well, let's get Setra on the point. Ushapti, you're doing good damage there. Bone Giant's going to be in position to start shooting soon. And eventually, they're going to have to come out of their hiding spots. We're going to get Setra up on the point here. Yeah, that should be good. Let's get a Horseman up, too. And now we have the capture weight, so I'm more than happy to just sit and trade with him at range. Uh, we see a couple Feral Cold Ones coming in. Okay, so Feral Cold Ones are on the way. Very scary. Now we just circle. I feel like I'm playing WoW Arena again, you know? Back in WoW Arena, like the, all the caster characters would just like hump the pillars, you know? All right, we'll start boner, gi boner gianting that guy from downtown. And uh, cool. So we just call in answers against the Feral Cold Ones, and I think we're fine. You can see big, big damage coming in. And we do have Spears at the ready to defend against the Feral Cold Ones. Uh, let's get here to keep the capture weight kind of even and just keep farming him for value. If he doesn't want to engage, he's going to regret it. Yeah, he's hiding behind the pillar. And now we have the capture weight, which is great. And let's get you and uh, get another one of these over here. Bone Giants. Ooh, direct hit on that Bastilodon. Hell yeah, baby. Let's go. All right, so Cetra's nearby. We're going to see where he decides to go. We do see Feral Cold Ones creeping around the bushes there. His army is getting hammered pretty freaking hard right now. And let's go ahead and get a Skeleton Warrior and pull him up here and have him just kind of intercept there. So he's getting blasted pretty good like. Let's come over this way. Get you and you. Okay. Cetra's nearby. And we do get the point. So he's going to have to advance up now, guys. He, he can sit and cackle all he wants. But the, if he cackles too long, he's going to have a terrible time. All right. So we got the Colossodon Hunters coming in. So we need to get the Bow Shopty going after them. Let's get you and you and pull you guys back. Outstanding. And uh, you guys can engage here. And the Boner Giant, yeah, we need to kill those Colossodon Hunters right now. So let's get you back, you back. We need to try and dodge that if we can and just re reset that position. All right. So a couple of the Hakar Horsemen are on the wings. And, ooh, he still gets us pretty good there, honestly. That was that was well played. Cetra's nearby, and we do have some support. So let's call in another uh, Horseman here. Cetra should be able to fight this. We're going to have to see how this goes. The Bone Giant still ripping shots where it can. And um, let's get you shooting into there get you guys back and once we just deal with the feral cold ones we'll be fine i think all right so he's gonna land on these guys so let's do this and run you guys through here run through do this and do this and now we can do the double here and we're gonna go ahead and do physical resist on you as well so we just gave our a horseman anti-large right so it's very very good and you can see how quickly the class and hunters are going down we're gonna do the blessed blade of patra as well so that should do well Back you go, buddy. Let's get the little skinks up there. And um, the Bone Giant is just shooting Mazda Money in the face right now. And this guy, we need to get back. Let's get on those Feral Cold Ones. Dude, Cetra just gave those Colossodon Hunters the business, man. Cetra ruling, apparently, huh? A little bit of ruling from old Cetra. I like it. All right. Cool to see him doing well. Cool to see him doing well. All right. So you horsemen, keep it up. The Bow Shop to you are back online. So let's start shooting at the uh, Temple Guard again. I think it's going to be a good call. They're a bit of a problem, but we do stabilize here. We clear out the backfield, so now we can move up with these. Outstanding. Call one horseman back here. And the bow shop, do you need to go here? Uh, we can take one horseman over to help hammer these little bastards down. And now let's go get Cetra on Mazda Chungus. We're up pretty heavily in value at this point. Uh, I don't know if we need to even call in catapults. I don't think so. so we're going to get a chariot and just get it behind these guys and just rear charge them. So, yeah, he's getting slapped with the fat boner. Um, the bow shop, are both online after that initial little dive attempt. So we'll get you on the Bastilodon, and Cetra is going to come over and try and hunt down this bad boy. You can see Mazda Chungus is going to be running. Let's do the Fizz Res to these Tomb Guard. And he can just help out with these, these guys for now. And uh, we can also collapse on those. All right, so we'll break those dinos. Uh, this is looking pretty stable here. All right, so let's get you moving up there. Uh, I'm going to keep a Tomb Guard on that back point. Ooh, nice banishment right there. That was very clean. 
That was very, very clean. All right, so let's get the bow shopty, all of them to focus on Mouse the Chungus right now. I think that's gonna be good. We're gonna rear charge in here, pull you guys up on the point, and um, hopefully Cetra can reach his target. We're gonna find out if we can. Come on, Bone Giant. Get that giant shaft in their face. They, you know they want it. Okay, so probably need to deal with this. Is this cohort of Waddle? It is. Okay, so that's a very scary one. We're gonna need to just, you know, get ready to party with those bad boys. Probably call in the Sepulchral Stalker Arawar to try and stop them. Uh, Cetra is putting in a little bit of work against Mazda Mundi. Let's give him uh, a spell passive. Do the anti-large. Keep working on Mazda Mundi. The Bone Giants are getting in, and we do not have anything guarding this, and so it's a little bit sloppy. All right, so let's get you guys on those Feral Cold ones. Yeah, if we can kill Mazda Mundi, we're fine. The points are pretty close at this. Ooh, we're very blobbed up here. That's tough. All right, so let's move to the back point here. Mazda Mundi keeps getting attacked by Cetra. Hopefully Cetra will win that fight. Uh, one bow Shopti is going to be shut down. We're going to save our Shopti summon for another rainy day here. But the big man is being taken down by Cetra the Imperishable. Oh, so cool. Chariots have done it. Let's move up to that point. Back cap him here. Cohort of Foddles getting Ushapti Great Boat pretty hard. And Chosen of the Gods can also switch to them. And Big Chungus is now down for the count. So what we need to do now is probably call in just a shit ton of infantry and try and get up to that middle and get the objective back. It's going to take a minute, but yeah, Tomb King shooting is no joke. Ooh, Cetra is a little bit trapped here, though. I don't like that. And I think we have to use the Ushapti summon to protect Cetra. Yeah, otherwise he could be in some danger. All right, so let's get this. Spears on those bad boys. You guys shoot here. Back point's going to get taken. So we got that one in our clutches. Cetra, we're going to give him some Fizzrez so he doesn't die. And we'll use the Blade of Petra. Uh, Maz the Chungus might get away here, which is tough. He might. We're going to go uh, bring a little bit of support to Cetra. And those guys have been cleared out. Great. So back point's looking good. At the very least, we're going to ninja it and uh, buy us a little bit of time. And let's go ahead and do anti-large on the Ushapti. So we're going to give them anti-large, which will be pretty cool. All right. So the Sacred Cohort of Waddle is going down. You can see how resilient Lizardmen are, right? Even in the face of being down by like a ton of value, they still find a way. Uh, let's get the Bone Giant in. It's still an okay terror-causing fighter. So we're going to try and do that. Mazda Mundi is hiding behind the pillar. So let's call the Bone Skeleton Chariot things down. Get a couple of these warriors cruising for a bruising and run into these, what are these, Temple Guard? Yeah, let's go run over the cohort of Sotek. Yeah, Cetra is actually doing pretty good this game. Yeah, 1,000 value so far for our boy isn't terrible. It ain't terrible. Uh, catapults, don't think we need them. We're going to go ahead and unsummon these Bow Shopti and um, resummon them, probably, because we, we might need more firepower, right? So the back objective has been taken, which is going to buy us time. We'll get the chariots in there. Cetra helping to break the position. Let's go ahead and do this. The Fizz Res on them. And the Boner Giant's going to come in with its giant shaft in a second and hopefully do some work. A couple Skeleton Warriors in the back point obviously going to be overwhelmed. And the Cohort of Waddle is down now, which is excellent. All right, so they've done their shooting. Let's get you guys around the side to poke Mazda Mundi. Uh, Bone Giant has arrived, so that's going to lead to some terror. And calling in Sepulchral Stalkers will counter the waves of uh, Croc Scores is going to be the plan. All right, so, yep, just do the Lore Passive. Let's just get that for the healing. We're up pretty heavily, um, but much of our value is tied up in Mazda Chungus, and he has healing too, so it's pretty funny. We're just trying to like trying to get him here. Uh, all right, so Sepulchral Stalkers are creeping up. My, one of my favorite looking units, hands down. And we got mostly infantry coming in, so this is a good chance for our chariots to do some work. Let's get the Bone Giant going after this unit here. And Warriors, we've arrived with a whole lot of capture weight now. Let's dodge that Banishment. And just keep Cetra rolling, rolling, rolling. He's just going to buff himself. He's been taking a little bit of a beating for sure, old Cetra. He, he certainly has. Uh, so we'll have another bow shop to you in a second. Let's just get some horsemen up for now. And um, yeah, we dodged one of the shots there. The other one got us right in the face. Well played to him, man. That was a very nice shot. And let's get these to start running over his infantry as they come in. Yeah, it could do some fat damage. Do I call in these guys? I think we can send up a spear unit. Let's just keep the tomb guard back here. I don't want to get ninja like I did last game. All right. So Cetra is going to go ahead and give himself anti-large. Hopefully he can win that fight. Let's get the Eyes of the Desert to start shooting Mazda Mundi. Uh, the Bone Giant has successfully chased this bad boy back. Chariot's uh, doing a good job running over Skinks. It's basically what they were born and bred to do. So uh, we got some of these. Uh, that's going to be a ruin ruination of cities. Mazda Mundi is getting laser beamed by these guys, but line of sight is a funky, funky thing in this game. Come on, Cetra. Mazda Mundi's such a good fighter, dude. All right, let's pop the Blessed Blade. Chariot, keep running these bad boys over. You see how he's kind of creeping value back a little bit? It's it's very, very sketchy. It's very, very sketchy. Uh, all right, let's get you guys in there. Mazda Money gets blasted by the laser beams. We'll do the Fizz Res on Cetra. Cetra, he rules. He does not serve. All right, Bow Shop to you. Let's go. Mazda Money taken down. 1,700 value on Cetra. He still hasn't quite paid for himself, but he's trying his best. You know, he's trying his best. Cetra is definitely not the most competitive lord in the world. All right, so spears are coming. 
Mazda Mundi is down, baby. The beast is down. Uh, let's give bonus first large to these um, Ushakti here against the Croxagors. We got the laser beam eyes shooting in there, which is cool. The petrifying gaze. And the bow Shopti, is he going to make a play for the back objective? I don't believe so. Yeah, looks like the Petrifying Gaze is doing it. Dark Elf Mirror Match right now. Commander, thank you for the donation, firstly. Um, secondly, it's not going to be possible today because this is a single faction tournament, so I'm locked into Tomb Kings uh, for the duration of the event. I think we got this one to the bag, though, at this point. Um, we could even start to play for the back objective, so we're going to send a Tomb Guard unit down there. It's going to take him a while, but, you know, he'll get there eventually. So the Bastilladon is down. He's probably going to go for a kill on Cetra, I would wager. Let's see if he is. Okay, no, he's going after the Chariots, which I totally forgot I had. And, um, all right, so let's get you back. Let's consolidate our forces. You guys kill the cohort uh, of uh, Annoying there. Shoot there. He's got a lot of units coming in. Let's get you guys up. Start shooting at the, uh, the little feral cold ones as they move in. Laser Beam Eyes doing good work. We got the cap weight. We got Tomb Guard waddling with their dreaded 28 speed. It's going to take them like 10 years to get here. If we need to, we can also transition um, a unit to the... Um, yeah, so here he comes. We just need to be ready for this, whatever the hell is going on here. All right, so these are Tomb Guard units. Is he going after Cetra? It looks like he is. Okay, so we need to just juke with Cetra. Just kind of like keep it nice and secret and safe. Sepulchral Stalkers, let's get you in there. Get the Sepulchral Stalkers back. Cetra, Cetra needs to live because he healed a lot, guys. He healed a lot. Oh, that's a really good play. I didn't notice that. Yeah, well played. All right, so we're going to try and run away with you guys. And Cetra could come and try and help if he wants to. We can run over here and just try and kite. Get the horseman in. He's rampaging right now because of the toad rage. I'm hoping my homies on the objective will win. Let's go ahead and do a fizz res on these guys to make them take less damage. So we managed to kite away from the toad raging. And um, sepulchral stalkers are coming. Cetra doesn't want to mess with that too much. Did we manage to get some of them? All right, great. So yeah, they're done rampaging. They didn't do enough damage. Sepulchral stalkers can shoot them here. And let's keep Cetra just hustling this way. Man, Lizardmen are just like, how are they still in this? It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and if he gets my Lord down, I could be in serious danger. So we're going to loot back this way with Cetra. All right, great. So we got him lured into combat, which is excellent. Let's nail these Bow Shopti. Let's get some more Tomb Guard coming. We might need to just play the middle objective with everything we have. So we're going to move up onto the middle too. Yeah, just finish off these Ripper Clossodon Hunters. Because he did have a shit ton of healing on Mazda Mundi, right? The Bone Giant's doing it. The infantry are fighting reasonably well. Uh, he's, he's spam clicking pretty hard here. He wants it. He wants it really bad. All right. Can we click him? There we go. All right. And then we'll get Cetra back. I should probably just unsummon Cetra at this point and just get him out of here, but his magic is still helpful. So, okay. So you're going here. You're going here. Let's get some of these guys going. Um, we're up on points. We could try and threaten the back objective with a little bit of ninja action, but I think we just need to move up and get the cap weight up there. Yeah. And just get like a solid presence, man. Just pure capture weight. We have time. We have a little bit of time. Oh my God. It's like playing Benny Hill with that. Yeah, too much overcasting on Cetra. Yeah, he took a bit of damage from that for sure. All right, so the Boner Giant's still duking it out. We have a lot of good units fighting on the point. Now let's get up. Let's get Cetra up there. Uh, the Bow Shopti have done it. So let's shoot you guys. And up you go and up you go. Cetra is getting hunted. But let's go ahead and do the Blessed Blades on the Tomb Guard right here. And Halberd Snakes can move in and fight there. All right. Yeah, Saurus are no joke, dude. I could definitely, definitely throw this game somehow. He's just sending the whole kitchen sink in the middle um, at the moment. We're going to go take these guys down. And uh, we need to shoot the Croxagors. Croxagors are like the biggest natural predator to us. Let's get some heck our horsemen up. Capture weight should start flipping soon. Yeah, we do get those guys off. The Bone Giant is on death's bed. Oh, is he out of ammo? No, he's he's he's, he's still terror though. So let's just sit him nearby. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Jesus. All right. So cap weight, cap weight. And, um, yeah, Croxagors are on their way in. The Sepulchral Stalkers need to start laser beaming them. Cetra needs to lurk nearby. And um, are we starting to get the cap weight back? We are. Good. And we're going to get a lot of units arriving to the objective shortly. And hopefully that will do it. Those Croxagors are getting great bowed. Let's start shooting at these Croxies. And uh, let's get the Halberd Snakes into them. And use Spears up on the point. Uh, he, I have to admit, guys, he had me, he had me um, sweating there for a second. I was kind of like, am I actually in danger? Am I in danger? All right, let's get some horsemen up to the side point. Cetra's just going to... He's ru he's ruling now. He's in his, his ruler phase. Uh, we do flip the objective with plenty of time to spare. But the back point... Ooh, I knew that would happen. Sneaky, sneaky. Uh, we need to get some horsemen back there, don't we? And some skeletons. Yeah, just for like cap weight. So we're going to run over there because he's going to see that idea now. He's going to be like, oh, that's a good idea, actually. I should, I should go do that, right? 
So Boner Giant has fought well. I mean, it's gotten 2,400 value. It's pretty good. Cetra is still hanging nearby. You know, you never know. But if Cetra dies, our whole leadership situation tanks. So we really can't afford to lose him. Oh, God! <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm, like, super focused here. Allergy season's a-creeping up on me. Uh, so those horsemen will salvage that side point. And then we just need to get some more Nehekara boys up to the, to the objective here. All right. Let's get you guys there. So they're hustling. Let's get these guys in front. I think we've got enough to just grind him to dust here. <laughs> I'm sorry if that scared you guys. I'm sorry. I believe we're fighting literally one red crested skink right here. Shop Depot's just so good, man. Such a good unit. And oh, is he coming for Cetra? I don't think so. Yeah, they're out of steam. But he did a really good job scrapping back, dude. This just goes to show the Lizardmen are just such a powerful faction. I honestly think um, Lizardmen can be potentially the strongest faction of the game right now. Like, maybe. Well, outside of Kislev. Um, they feel really, really good. After, like, the buffs they got. Like, here's the thing, guys. The entire the entire uh, Lizardman army, like, all their skinks and shit are immune to fear at the moment, right? Because they, if they're near Croxagors. So, like, they have, like, such a leadership buff that they, you know, they didn't have before. Um, yeah, let's just play the two points and not be stupid. Um, we see the big dino. We could send in Cetra. Let's, uh, Cetra is too much of a chad, you know. He's going to go fight there. Let's pull back the Halberd Snakes. Let's get the Chosen of the Gods and start blasting these guys. We'll kind of tie up these Croxigors a little bit. Cetra's on the hunt. And we're going to rear charge these Croxies, and um, that will get their aggro. And then we just shoot them from the back or the front with the bows. It's going to be the play. So, um, yeah, they're they're breaking here finally. Sorry, guys. That was a, that was a, a, ramp, a wild sneeze. Dude, if this Bastilodon takes down Cetra, that's going to be the most depressing shit. How much value has Cetra got in this game? He's got over 2k, which is good. He hasn't quite paid for himself. Okay, now we don't want any piece of this, because we see the big Crocs of our spanking paddles coming. Let's go run you guys down. Let's get another Bow Shafty coming up, just in case. You never know. You can never be too safe here. Cetra's going to waddle away, and the, the Snake Halberds, unfortunately, didn't get the best engagement here. Come on, Cetra. Oh, God. It's Jurassic Park. The T-Rex is in the rearview mirror. Uh, let's send you guys to intercept. And he got Colossus on Hunters out again. Wow. Okay. So Cetra's piecing out, but that cohort of Foddle's getting it. Old Mancy's, you can relate. I know you can. That was a good game, though, man. Uh, that was a very good match. GG, well played. All right. So we're back in the running. Um, Cetra was kind of a fun pick. I don't know if I would pick him again. Arkin with Spirit Leech would probably just be way better. Um, Temple Guard did fine. Bo Shopti carried as usual. 3,821 on you. Bone Giant ended up being a very good tech, 2400, Eyes of the Desert. All the usual suspects did very, very good. So, um, oh my god, Tetra was like getting Jurassic Park right there, dude. I had, to, I had to peace out. That was very scary. No audio? Are you saying there's no audio from me or from the game? I probably hit the hotkey. I'll fix it after this. Thank you for the heads up. All right, so that's going to be 1 and 0. Oh. Report score. The Tomb Kings... Yes. Tomb Kings and Fidel is going to be... What was he playing? He was playing the forces of the Lizardmen. All right. Cool, man. Stat tracking is going strong. Cetra is a, is a Chad pick for sure. Yeah. So this, this is a, this is a SFT format. So you play one faction. There's four rounds of Swiss. So you get a different opponent. Theoretically, each round. Sometimes you can get a double opponent. But um, yeah. Turn sneeze jump scare. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. GG, well played. All right. We're all set. And let's see if there's any housekeeping that needs to be done. Uh, I don't think so. Serkia, my my uh, noble, noble first round opponent, is off to a good start, which is good. We need him to win all of his games. So we need, um, we need the guy we just played to win some games. Win those next games for me. Good. <laughs> Get those tiebreakers. The Chariot of the Gods is so terrible against Lizardmen with all the Croxagors and stuff. Oh god, it's such an expensive piece of crap. It sucks. Because it's like it's it should just be awesome, but it's uh, unfortunately it's not. Yes. So looking at the brackets, we're pretty close to the next round, actually. Uh, we only have two games left. So this has been a much quicker round. We have Drove God versus Martin and Leech Lord versus Professor Pwn down here. Should be a fun one. And um, the standings as of now, you can see the players who are undefeated at the top. So we got Serkia, Scrambled Egg, and uh, Stara, Nautical Sky, and Tupac here. Very cool. And Hitman Hippo. You gotta love to see it. And uh, yeah, a couple new faces, which is cool. We'll see how they do in the later rounds. 
here's myself. So we're we're in the running. You know, we just gotta win our next couple matches and we'll be okay. We'll be a okay to try and submarine our way in. It got buffed. The cherry to the gods got buffed. You say? When did it get buffed? Did I miss it in today's patch notes? Hmm. I don't think I saw it in today's patch notes. Maybe maybe uh, let's look at those together. Okay, I'm gonna pull it up. All right. So on the patch notes here, let's scroll down. Yeah, so you can see um, gameplay. I guess would it be here? Probably battle highlights. Is this the old one? This is a Rampage rework one, right? This is the old blog, I think. Yeah, it looks like this is the old blog. I'm gonna need to find the other one real quick. Unless this is, this is not today, right? No, it's from February 21st. Oh, I've been tricked for the last time. Uh, 4.2, part three, Kislev. I don't know where the hell the patch notes are. Let me find these here. Oh, it's a hotfix. Okay, here it is. And let's go to that. I believe that's from today. Yes, it is. Okay. The old man found him, baby. Still got it. Okay, so it's Twitter. Yeah, so Celestial, Gen uh, Celestial General got on the Lion got a buff, which is kind of cool. And the Celestial Lion got a nice buff. I would be fun. To, I kind of wish I had played Cathay today. That could have been fun to try. Here's the Kairos nerf. Jesus Christ, there's a lot of changes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Most of them are just really small things though. I don't think, um, let's look at, yeah, I don't see Cetron here, Chariot. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Hmm. Let me go look at Cetra in general and just see if it has any changes that I maybe omitted. Uh, Tomb Kings, where you at? Cetra, the Imperishable. Does he have the new charge thing? Yeah, he's got Glorious Charge. Okay, that's kind of cool. So maybe maybe Cetra is okay for like... Uh, maybe he's okay. He got added to his mobility scooter as well, huh? Yeah. I'll take it, man. I will take it. That's a wall of text for Kairos. It really is. <laughs> uh, my opponent saying that. I thought your lord was Arkin for most of the game, so I was not falling over Mazda when I realized it was Cetra. <laughs> Oh, my opponent didn't realize it was Cetra because he's such an uncommon pick. That's how. That's the advantage of Cetra, right? That's the advantage. Uh, all right, so one game yet to finish. Looking good so far, and we uh, will be good to party, man. A lot of good matches today. Cetra got his value back plus healing and buffs. Yeah, it's true. The only risky thing about bringing Cetra is like your combat lord and caster is, is that he still is. You know, he still almost died. So. Um, Tomb Kings suffer really bad from losing a Lord, just like in Tabletop. Like, your Skeletons are base 35 leadership, and if Cetra dies, you subtract 10 from that. So they're going to be at 25, which is just foul. That's, like, so weak. Uh, who else has Glorious Charge? Did they, they didn't give it to the Snake Knights, did they? No, they didn't. Okay, that would have been kind of a cool one. What about the Chariots here? Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. He doesn't have it on the, the Sphinx, does he? Because that would be pretty good if he has it on the Sphinx. Uh, no, he doesn't. No, it's just on the, um, so you get it on horseback. So he literally only gets it on his chariot of the gods, it looks like. Yeah, there's the glorious charge there. Now it's gone. It's a shame. He can kind of duel in a chariot. Ner chariot dueling is really clunky, though. It's really clunky. Yeah, I honestly think if I were to choose a mount, it'd probably be the War Sphinx, because that thing at least has 10,000 HP. So it's like your big caster centerpiece is going to be harder to kill. I wish you could heal him with Necrotex when he was on there too. That'd be really nice. I don't think you can. I think it only targets like just the, the cause I don't think he gets the constructs keyword. No, he doesn't. Crown of Hakar is a pretty good item though. Base 12% damage is pretty sweet. So if you have like Cetra rolling with like maybe a Necropolis Knight unit, maybe it can do some work. Maybe Cetra on a chariot with the Necropolis Knight Halberds just rolling around. Cause theoretically they're like a cure all, right? They should be good against both things. Uh, like, you could bring the Necropolis Halberds and him on the Chariot, so he'll kill the infantry and they'll kill the large. Uh, would a good Kislev nerf be... They need a lot of stuff. Like, if we're talking Kislev nerfs, you probably need to cost increase a handful of their units, and you probably reduce the damage on their pistol shooting, right? So if you look at Kislev pistols, which Kislev in many ways should be inferior in terms of powder technology to the Empire, right? They have seven armor piercing on their pistols, which is insane. So they can actually tear you to shreds pretty quickly. 
Whereas if you look at the Empire, um, I believe like they're basically using the same weapon as Free Company Militia. And Free Company only have two armor piercing. So a big change for me would be to nerf the hybrid shooting of Kislev, like in terms of their Kossars. Leave their bows and stuff. But like armored Kossars can just go into guard mode and kill anything. I would remove I would remove like 5 AP, 4 AP, and make them have the same profile as Free Company Militia for shooting. Because uh, Empire should have superior powder technology in general anyways. Um, yeah, they're just, no, they're just OP. Kislev's just, in, in a single faction format, Kislev is really broken. Because you can't counterpick them, right? Yeah, you can't. All right, so let's refresh this, see how we're looking. There's a lot of things that you need to nerf with them. A whole bunch. All right, one game yet to finish. Professor Pwn has fallen, but he did win his first round, I think, did he? Did Pwn win his first round? I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Would Armored uh, Kossar's AP be better in a matchup? Uh, so you go in the Dwarf matchup, you go, if you're playing Kislev against Dwarves, you're going to go for the Shielded variant, just because they last way longer, in my opinion. You probably honestly bring both. Like, so if I was playing Dwarves with Kislev, um, I would probably do, like, Armored Kossar's and then... Are we talking land battle or are we talking dom? I'll just do a land battle build for you. Something like this, probably a couple of these. Um, and then here, I would probably still bring some Akshinas just to get in and like ambush things. You could even go double little Grom. If you want to be a real degenerate troll, you can do double little Grom like this. And because your double little Grom will probably win artillery duels. So you could do that. But if we're doing like a rush, let's do a rush. Um, yeah, so things in the woods, you probably bring a couple of these for harassing missiles. Um, probably a cheap Ice Witch of Tempest and just Blizzard Spam or Hailstorm. I'm not sure which one would be the way. All right. So this is looking pretty nasty against Dwarves already. I'm not sure how they would fare against this. Um, and then you could bring like a Hero Squad if you want to. You could do Gotrek and Felix. You could even do a Foot Character too. Um, like a Drugina could be fun. You could do a Drugina actually and like have an Artillery Duel. Yeah. But some direction like this would be very strong and maybe throw in like uh, Akshina just to, just to snipe their missiles. So you could have like double Akshina on top of um, Dwarven missiles. Like, so this would be like a decent little rush and you could throw in some Winged Lancers too. Like there's there's like five Kislev builds I could show you that would work, you know what I'm saying? Um, double Little Grom with Patriarch uh, Lullaby healing would probably beat Dwarven Artillery with magic support. Yeah, I think it would. Kislev just is like the best at everything. Yeah. All right. So let's advance the Swiss, go to the next round, and we are live. All right. Here we go. So we are playing Pasha. Good luck, have fun. Next round is live. The old man, yeah, sneeze. I'm sorry, guys. I couldn't help it. And let me find my opponent here. All right, all right. So where are we at and what map are we on? We're gonna be on the Decrepit Moor. God, we have so many cool maps. We have so many cool maps. And this is gonna be the Decrepit Moor. All right. And um, let me get the lobby code and invite my opponent here. Good luck, have fun. So we'll see what my opponent's playing. Should be fun. Uh, when Hailstorm, Windblast is actually a pretty good spell in certain matchups. Yeah, pretty good spell. Kiss of Halberds are better than Empire 50 gold cheaper. I know, it's pretty stupid. It's pretty stupid. Empire Halberds could literally cost like 450, 500. Uh, although the Kiss of Halberds should just cost more. They should be like 600. But they're trying to give Kiss of a cheaper unit. You know what I'm saying? Oh God, no, not the dwarves. This is a forbidden matchup, dude. This one is super awful. Oh no, not the that way. No. <laughs> No, not the dwarves. Oh, Tomb Kings is so rough in the dwarves because of the blasting charges. It's just pure punishment. All right, guys, it's um, it's time. Let the Nurglings feast. So we're on the decrepit moor. Yes. This is going to be fine. Everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. Don't you worry. All right, so we'll get you here. Um, Yeah, that's probably OK. It's probably fine. Not the Dowie, dude. No. The Dowie are just brutal, man. Oh, God. It's so for such a forbidden matchup. Meme Casket. He's going to go Blasting Charges. Of course he is. 
Of course he is. It's going to feel quite bad. It's going to feel bad, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So we definitely need a couple of these to keep that honest. Otherwise, we could run into some danger. Um, I think he's ready to go. Probably fine in the backfield there. A couple of these, and yes, a lot of these, and then a handful of these would be good in our army. Hmm. A max who shopped you with Necrotech. Yeah, I got I got a scheme though, Catholic. We have a slightly different playstyles. I think I have some I think I have some forbidden tech here that could work. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Okay. That's gonna be good. Let's do that. And then we can do this and this. Yeah, all right. So the truly forbidden technology will rise. And um, we will try and stop the Dowie. But this is a massively favored dwarf matchup. Massively favored. We're gonna try our best though, boys. We're gonna try our best. Two, three, and four. Um, all right, so what are we missing here? What are we missing? If I don't see Charity of the Gods, I'm on game. Yeah. This matchup is really dumb, though, because cannons can just, like, pound them. So I, I, I'm not going to mess with that. But um, if there is an op if I lose this game, then I will bring Charity to the Gods for you. Because then I won't have any chances of qualifying, so I won't care. Um, all right. So that looks fine. That looks all right to me. Let's get you in there and then you as well. I think we're maxed out on that. So, yeah, we got two of these bad boys. Um... Do we want to bring any archers for any reason? I'm trying to think if that's like any good here. Like basic Skeletor archers? Probably not. He seems ready, which is making me a little bit nervous. That's for sure. And, um, okay. What schemes do we have? There's going to be just super erect angry slayers all over the battlefield, obviously. So that's going to be hard to deal with. Tomb Guard Halberds are a decent sustainable fighter, um, I think, in this matchup. They probably don't like fighting slayers, but um, although, is it worth just getting the shield? I think the armor piercing is worth it on those guys. Yeah, I think that's probably worth. All right. So aside from that, we can get the, uh, we don't have quite enough for that, unfortunately. That's kind of a cool item too, but not gonna work out. Old uh, Skeletor here is is ready. We'll just get that for the laughs. Uh, use Cetra last match, but I'm not sure. I did use Cetra though. Yeah, I, I think, I feel like I deserve some points for using Cetra. Um, a little something something from you guys at least. Okay, so two of those is probably fine. Yeah, that's way too many of those. As far as the other tools go, um, we're gonna have to get real sneaky sneaky here. We're gonna have to be like extra sneaky snakes. Do we want a horseman archer? Probably not really gonna serve much purpose. A couple chaff units I suppose wouldn't be bad. And we could bring you as like a tech. That actually feels all right. Oh, hold up, actually. I didn't think of that. That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? That is a bit of a problem. Yeah, so we got you, and um, then we're going to need this. Let's get that for our last unit, and then we have 160, so it's going to be 550. And we can cut that, and yeah, you know what? That's probably fine. That'll do, pig. Good luck have fun to my opponent, man. Oh, the Slayers are so good here. They're so good. Yeah, it's really hard to stop them. Uh, can Tomb Kings deal with small SCs? Yeah, you can. You have Spirit Leech and you have Chariots and stuff, so you can, like, you can do it. Yeah. God dang it, Bobby. If we win this, that's going to be pretty tough. My opponent is a man of few words. He has not said anything to me, despite accepting the invite. Just pure business. And, ooh, looks like we have another tournament tomorrow, by the way. So another tournament going down tomorrow. All right, all right. Here we are, baby. I wish scorpions. Scorpions would be good here. Like if they actually worked like they were supposed to, they'd be really good. Yeah. Uh, if he goes two indexes too much into single entities, I feel like I can just play the objectives and win. But I could be wrong. We'll, we'll have to find out. Yeah, probably should have brought something that could kill characters. Can an actor tech beat a thane? Mm, I don't know about that. I think like an actor tech plus another hero could. All right, guys. We're hedging our bets. <laughs> We're hoping that he doesn't bring a lot of uh, a lot of cannons. We're going into the screaming meme catapult territory. Rise, legions of Nagar! Rise! 
I figure if we're going to win this, we need to go like really extreme, right? Like really, really extreme. So that's what we're doing. So we're going to do that and hopefully it'll go well. We got a couple team guard halberds in the secondary and uh, we're going to try and make this work. Arkin as well, just with Spirit Leech to kill characters and a Necrotect. And then we just call a new shop these. You got it. Hey, Terran, big fan. How do you feel about Elite Infantry? They're good. Yeah, I, I win a lot of games with Chosen. I mean, they're niche, but when they do work, they work. Like, I was in the grand finals of a tournament the other day. No, semifinals against the, probably one of the best Bretonian players we have. And my Chosen of um, Slanesh got me like 4K value and won me the game. Like, they're good. Is there sound now? Okay, you got Bone Daddy sounds going. All right, guys. It's time. Let's get you over here. Arkin's going to go Mission Impossible around the back and try and avoid cannons and get some summons on him. It might work. Like, these catapults can just devastate dwarves if they're not prepared for it. Chosen a Buna. No, we don't have Buna. We just have, we just have this. Yeah. The Necrotech lurks in the bushes as well. I got the game sound on now. He's taking a while to set up. Yeah, get an extra... Oh my god, it's Ungram and a Hero Squad. Oh wow, okay. So that's that's different than what I was expecting. Alright, let's get you guys all set up like so. And Setra's gonna go start Spirit Leeching, because why the hell not? So we're gonna run over here and Spirit Leech. Um, Thane, Thane, he has no healing. So Ungram is like a top tier Spirit Leech target. So we're just gonna we're gonna just start SL in him. Uh, aside from this, we're gonna start calling a new Shopti. Oh, he's got Iron Drakes too, okay. So this individual has won one game and lost one game. I don't know their experience levels. I, I don't know it, so um, time will tell. Let's get the Ushapti out. He's gonna he's gonna meet my Bo Shopti head on. Uh oh. Someone could be in a little bit of danger. Someone could be in some danger. Oh, never mind. That army's pretty big. Okay. Let's get Van Brace boys over here, and we'll just kind of pop around the side and be extra evil and sneaky. And uh, evil, yes, evil Arkin. All right, so yeah, hero squads are pretty scary. This guy looks like a land battle player. I'm getting land battle vibes from him, the way his army is. Uh, which, he might wreck me with it, who knows? This is a cursed matchup, so anything could happen. All right, so we got the Spirit Leech. The Catapults are almost out of the woods. And um, we're gonna go ahead and just get ready to, we just need to keep them from advancing like heavily. Because the way to beat Tomb Kings with Dwarves is just to like bull rush them, basically. Um, so we're gonna kind of lurk in the shadows and drop some love back here for these guys. All right, so let's do that. And then we're gonna pop out of the trees again. Hunger and want some. Ah, I could drop a skeleton summon on him, but I think we're okay. All right, so catapult in time. It's the best part in Morbius. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I almost got Arkin clubbed by a homeboy there. And let's start hitting you. Okay, great. So Arkin got away there. That could have been really, really bad. And you guys move up on this point and um, we're gonna go ahead and call in some uh, Nahakar warriors for the home point here. Here he comes. All right, let's spirit leech on me again. Unleash the screaming skulls. Skulls for the skull god. <laughs> All right, so let's get the uh, Ushapti over here to hang out. We see his army taking a lot of damage and something that's really good to stifle people's advance is to use just like haggard skeleton summons on them, right? So we're just gonna do this here to uh, block him up a little bit, right? So in the meantime, we just unleash a hellish torrent of screaming skulls on him. And uh, so far, it seems to be doing well. Yeah, we're getting a lot of lot of value in there. A lot of uh, damage, as the French would say. And yep, skeleton summons start pitting him, probably confusing the tactics a little bit. Yep, I knew gyros would come, so that's why I went. Carrion, carrion. Go, go, mighty carrion. All right, so the carrion stand at the ready. Uh, we probably just take down the missiles, actually. So let's focus the missiles here and focus the uh, missiles here on the corollers. The blasting charges are gonna be a bit of a problem, for sure. But nonetheless, we get you out here and you here and just kind of park and protect. We call back uh, a Tomb Guard Halberd unit. We need to just value him here. You know, we need to just get value. That's basically it. And then the Van Braces of the Sun can come over here. All right, so the Carrion will lurk and just follow those bad boys around. We're gonna get onto the point here. And um, the Slayers are coming pretty hard for us. So we're gonna have to sacrifice the Skeleton Horseman unit into them, likely. All right, so he got nailed with that. Let's get our cap weight on there. Pull back a little bit and retreat. Okay, so we got good value for now. Um, these guys are gonna go ahead and hammer this and we'll get the Van Brace boys over there too to go take them out and Halberds as well. So hopefully we can just shut them offline. We have the one cap, let's get you guys in, let's get you guys in and send the Carrion to go hunt the gyrocopters. 
So he's hunting my lord. Yeah, this guy's clearly a good player. I can I can see the patterns of, of solid play here. So let's get this and this. And um, yeah, the catapults are still raining some, some hot fire into him here. So let's switch the targets, you know, freshen up the targets a little bit. And you can go here and you can go here. So the gyrocopters are hit, and the slayers over there are going to get massacred. So that's good. So that's a that's a, a good value trade for us. So now we need to call in more Ushapti. So let's go for the Ushapti. Just use them to deal with anything that penetrates through the front line here. And you can see the uh, flamethrowers are chasing us. But we're just going to ignore the, that side point there and just, you know, try and get this one back. The dwarves are probably going to be up in value pretty heavily. We need to, um, yeah, just keep spirit leeching you. Gyrocopters are getting karate chopped. Slayers over here get massacred, but not before they do some really good damage, actually. So let's get you out of here, man. Those Tomb Guard Halberds will hopefully finish the job. All right. So Nehekar Warriors, let's have them stand at the ready. And we will eventually engage there. Let's chase this other gyrocopter. And we can use you, yeah, this guy to intercept those Iron Drakes. You guys to move in there. And Slayers have been dealt with, which is great. So now we need to just look at reinforcing dwarves here. Yeah, nail you, and um, we could start trying to shoot you as well. All right, pop this. Get a little fizz res right there and move in there. Arkin seems reasonably healthy. Uh, and we're going to need to call in another carrion to finish off the gyros. Yeah, we can't let those gyros shoot my lord, so it just can't happen. All right, Ungrim's going to get it, and we got the double uh, Nakara warriors moving in. Hopefully we can diminish them. You Shopti in the front. Let's go punch through those longbeards. It's going to be a game where he potentially wins on objectives, right? We do have the Slayers still trolling into my secondary here. So let's get you, do this, and go run down those Slayers right there. Keep chasing the Gyrocopter, and let's get you over the top here. See what we can make happen. And hopefully we're starting to win some of these fights. It's hard to tell. Let's do a restore on these Uchopti. And are these Slayers here? Are there Slayers in there? I don't think so. All right. So the chasing is going. Um, that character core could be a little bit problematic for the capture weight. So let's get some more um, Warriors up here, because we need to flip this objective back, right? So let's get on this. And um, the gyrocopters are getting pounded pretty good. We've cleaned up this. So let's go roll and get this objective now. We're really going to need it. We're going to need it pretty good. Like, uh, actually, you know what? Let's have these catapults shoot here. And these catapults can shoot here. Most of the positions are faltering a little bit. We're going to keep working on Ungram because, you know, one of these years he might go down. And let's do the summon on top of those. Great. So this point should flip for us here in a minute. Uh, let's get on these missiles. These halberds can move up, and we're probably going to ninja his back point, I think is going to be the play. We're going to need to do it soon, though. Like, very, very soon. So let's get you, and get you over here. Yeah, so that point's going to go to us. He's getting outvalued pretty damn hard. Uh, he's got a big blob of troops coming out, so this is, like, a perfect situation for us to bombard, because they're all tightly packed. So we're going to switch, like, all of our bombards onto that. Uh, gyros are almost dead. Yeah, let's go ninja his back point. Let's do that. That seems like it's a strong play. So we're going to move through here. Uh, Carrion can go and shut down, I don't know, Halberds need to get up there. And we need to get, do we have any more mobility? We do have some more. Alright, so let's get some more mobility over and go ninja his points. Because he's not going to be able to respond to those terribly well. We got the Halberds coming. Um, let's run interference with these Carrion, just to keep him from advancing up. And you guys can go and just get his back point. Because we can just grind here with the summons and whatnot for a while, and we'll Spirit Leech on to Ungram too. I feel like this is like the boss fight, you know, with Tomb Kings. That we just have to deal with here. Yeah. And let's get you back. Have you go run this over. Uh, this point's going to flip to us right now. He's going to get blasting charges on me, unfortunately. So that's going to suck really bad. But we do get it, which is really good. Because it kind of um, stems the bleeding, right? So we get on to you. Uh, Van Brace's man is going to go here. We got Ushapti here. Let's go ahead and attack these guys. And um, now we can charge them now that they're going to get diminished a little bit. A couple of you guys can head over there. And uh, how are we looking on the catapults? Yeah, they're doing pretty good. Doing pretty darn good. And that point's going to go to us. And then we're going to need to find a way to get our home point. The dwarves will probably be just like trickling out from here. Yeah, nice. Nice nice isolation. All right, so let's come down here. Let's come down here. Let's get here. Now we basically just send all hands on deck to our home objective, right? So let's actually get... Um, yeah, just do Shopty. Shopty are going to be fine. So we've taken the home objective. Let's come back here. This point is looking pretty much like locked in for us, I think. Catapults are just doing the work of the gods, obviously. So let's blast here. And is there anything to shoot here, really? Not a whole lot. You can see Ungram's a little bit low. Let's do the shield block here and get the halberds coming up. Ushapti need to probably stay over here to make sure we don't lose it. And we do have a couple more catapults. Yeah, let's shoot those slayers. Slayers are really good. They're really good here. All right, so let's go ahead and spirit leech you again. The thanes are just trapped in my warriors, which is fine. 
the grind here is getting a little bit dodgy. We need to get back on the point with those those big ones. And um, we do have Ushapti. Pretty much everything here is large, which is very frightening. Uh, it's going to get a lot of value, but I think we got to do it. Yeah, I think we got to do it here. Let's get the Van Brace boys, and they can just support. And um, we got him triple cap now. And Ungram's almost dead, too, which is great. So let's head over here. Have these halberds finish off Ungram. Have you Slayers attack here. Yes, yes. Head over this way. I think we got this point. All right, so we got more of these. I don't want to let those Blasting Charges get there, so we're going to try and nuke them. And let's call it the Blessed Legion. Just have them sit in the middle here. Okay, Slayers are getting it a little bit. Let's do Wrath of the... Uh, not Wrath of the Creator, but let's do that. We have these to watch out for Gyrocopters. Yeah, he's got some over there, so let's go get those. Um, Ungram's going to die probably to the infantry, to the Tomb Guard Halberds, and so too will the Thanes. So the Thanes will fall here, and we should be okay. All right. So aside from this, what do we want to call in? Uh, is there any unsummoning we need to do? Not really. Gyrocopter should get taken offline. Uh, and we do have this. All right. So if we could get a skeleton summon here, that'd be pretty good. But we're on horseback. So let's see if we can salvage these Ushapti. Just pull them back. Yeah, get those Ushapti back. Let the Slayers just get tarpeted by chaff. And dude, just look at the four catapults pounding one of Blasting Charge Boy. Okay, so now we can fall back from his home objective and just play this. Oh my god, really? Just that, that freaking one guy. Oh, those cavalry never moved out. That's a shame. All right, so we went on two now, so let's just pull back. Uh, we'll fight a little bit longer on the point, and we can just retreat back here and then just start value trading with him again. Ungram didn't hear no bell whatsoever. Cavalry should get in and finish the job there. And uh, yeah, we'll just start moving up with Chaff towards his back objective. We get the Blessed Legion heading over there too to deal with Slayers. Yes, yes. The catapults have just been gods here. And my concern is that when they run out, I might be in a little bit of danger. Um, he's going to flip that one. Arkin has, uh, yeah, one Thane is down. And the other Thane will be chased down here. So now we can get you guys and start, like, mobilizing towards his back point, right? We get the Blessed Legion coming. Um, we'll form ranks right here. Form ranks right here. These catapults are just gods here. Just absolute gods here. And now that his lord is dead, his leadership's going to be a little bit worse, too. Oh, God. <laughs> that's a lot of catapults at Sun Tzu, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's what he said in the Art of War. Bring many catapults. All right. Let's get you over here to chase down the Thane so Arkin can go do other things. Um, we do have this catapult. Let's unsummon it, do a little bit of housekeeping, and housekeeping. Unsummon that one, too, and unsummon that one, too. So we're about to lose a lot of units on the battlefield, which is a little bit dodgy. We do win on two, if I'm not mistaken, but it's close. Uh, let's unsummon these, these Ushapti here. So we're going to get a lot of points. Both the Thanes are being chased down. We have the Blessed Legion here, which is going to be great at wrecking Slayers. All right, so that looks good. That looks good. And let's unsummon you. And then we need to just get, you know, whatever the hell we can out in the field, right? Yeah, having Un Ungram is like an easy one to resummon, though. So, you know, let's pull these Ushapti back until we can get a little bit of milk for them. Shoot those Dwarf Warriors. And uh, let's unsummon you. Also, this Catapult is out of ammo, so let's just unsummon it. Tomb Guard are going to sit on the point. Both Thanes are on the run. We do have good a good hold on the objectives, um, but the Catapults are offline. This is like our window of vulnerability, right? This guy's a good player, though. I, I can tell. He's, he's, he's got some reps in the old land battles, I, I bet. He plays very much like land battle. Yeah. All right, so let's move up here. The Thanes are being just chased in circles. And um, how many of the Catapults can we resummon right now? We need to get them back online to continue the punishment. Okay, is there another one? Yes, yes. Outstanding. So let's get the catapults wheeled back out. Because there is a chance he could start to value push me here. You know, it's a little bit scary. Um, let's shoot at his corollers with the Blessed Legion. Move here, move here. Get the Necro checked in the blob fighting. And we can... Ooh, we actually have a skeleton summon right here as well. Arise, my meme legions. Yes, arise. Uh, shoot the Slayers, for sure. No, those are Dwarf Warriors. Okay. Now oh, we can shoot the Dwarf Warriors because we're about to shut these guys down anyway, so... All right, let's do that. Ark in the black, yes, evil. All right, so we're moving up to the point. I wish I wish they had brought Arkin back in Old World as like a character. That would be really fun. I bet you they will at some point, but. Catapults, assemble. <laughs> uh, did we go attack the blasting charges? I think we do. Yeah, the archers are doing work now. He's just trickling everything into one point, so I don't think there's going to be much going on here. Save Spirit Leeches for anything of value. Uh, I think we got this one in the old bag. Those Thanes are still being chased by horsemen, which is hilarious. 
Ah, the dreaded blasting charges. I was wondering when they would emerge. All right, let's go run them down with horsemen to waste their blasting charges and move you to the back of the objective, which is going to be very strong. We're recharging our tomb summon here. The objective slipping for us. Blessed Legion is going to be Sundering Armor, which is really good against dwarves. And, um, all right. So, yeah, we got our two Mima Pults back. Just when he thought I was out of ammo, we're back for round two, baby. A couple Iron Drakes on the other side being called in. And there we go. All right, cool. What is this going to be? Ekron's Miners. Okay, let's go attack them. And finish these guys off. We got his back point. We got him triple caps. Uh, we can send the Chaff unit in, or the beat-up unit, to go deal with that. Catapults are at the ready, General. And we got two of them coming in here. I actually just got my Screaming Skull Catapult in the mail. Yes, yeah, so I managed to get my hands on one. Super excited to use them in tabletop. Uh, Carrion, yeah. The Dryocopters were... If I didn't bring Carrion, I would have lost this game, I think. The Carrion were pretty clutch. All right, let's get those Longbeards. The Blasting Chargers get wrecked before they can do anything. Classic. And uh, let's go ahead and form ranks here and form ranks here. Have you guys start nailing these. Yeah, see, this is what would have happened to me earlier, right? He, he, a really good play on his part, by the way. So he just got double um, double Gyrocopter and ambushed Arkin, like overextended in, in his, his line. So I'm going to lose Arkin here, probably. See? Uh, thankfully for me, it's too late for him. Like, if, if, this, if I had been caught in such a shitty play earlier, maybe. But, you know, I'm being kind of reckless now because I think I have it in the bag. But, yeah, we got the carrying coming out. So let's give them hunting. Let's just juke with Arkin if we can. Juke! If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Get in the trees. All right, the carrion should be arriving soon. Those guys have been shut down. Let's move across. If we can just get Arkin away, that's going to be very nice. All right, so that side's completely offline. And here we got a couple Blasting Charge boys coming back in. Yeah, Arkin's getting the dirty from those gyros, man. Very nasty, very nasty. All right, let's shoot here. Keep stuffing the dwarves. And now we're both going to be leaderless. Uh, we can get one Spirit Leech off before he dies, probably. Oh my god, if Arkin stabilizes with 19 leadership. Yeah, look at it. How quickly the gyros killed him. <laughs> Carry in my wayward son. Oh, I love that. That's really good. Uh, wild errant dwarf over there. Got the gyros on the run. That one got broken for some reason. Like Thanos in Endgame. Fire everything. Uh, Alright, so catapult in time. Let's get on those long beards. We can just hunker down on our uh, home objectives now. So let's call in some Ushapti to deal with those. So that my build was kind of a gamble. Like, if he didn't bring cannons, I felt confident, and he didn't. So, um, that was good. All right, so the Carrion have swarmed the Air Force once again, but not before poor Arkin, um, poor Arkin paid the troll toll. Hunt here. Get you guys to go here. He gets a nice little flamethrower on the Blessed Legion. Uh, he's moving back in with blasting charges. Oh, God, get him. Stop him. Call in some horsemen. Always just run from blasting charges and then kill them with like mass, right? And that would be it. Alright. Skulls for the Skull Throne. That'll certainly be a confusing replay title. No, he didn't bring artillery though. He went with the character squad. Um, which is pretty chad for sure, but you could see the value. Ungram got four. Yeah. The gyros were scary. What did he have? He only had a... If he had brought, like, triple, double or triple cannon, I would have been absolutely done. I would have lost that game so hard. So, really a gamble, but it ended up paying off, so... You say GG, well played. Okay. It's a strong silent type, this man. Doesn't say much. Uh, I've been playing since Warhammer 1. I main dwarfs and a few others. Can you please explain why Slayers are a good unit for multiplayer? Oh, they're amazing. I mean, they're one of the best tools dwarves have at dealing with large units. They're very good at sitting on objectives and fighting. They're fast, so you can actually push into people's backfield. And what do people typically defend their backfield with? Cavalry. And if they want to attack Slayers with Cavalry, they're going to take some losses. So, um, yeah, that's typically that. Okay. So he was playing the dwarves, and I was playing the tomb kings. So that's a hard matchup, and we got past it, which I'm very happy about. All right, cool. Catapult value? Yeah, let's do that real quick. All right. And um, catapults. Eight, only 800, 913, and 12. Not much value because um, dwarves just, you know, it was mainly chaff units, right? Arkin did good at 1,400. Ushapti fought pretty well, 1,000 and 13. With dwarves, the value is usually spread out over a bunch of units. Yeah, they, they did well, though. Did the cats do well? What cats? Catapults, yeah, they did fine. 
they carried that game, obviously. It's it's pretty hard to dive the dwarf backfield, you know, if they're on the defense. Yeah, it's hard. Well, you know, in one of the next SFTs, I'll, I'll let Kisla play in the next one, and we can see um, if the item change maybe makes a difference. But they kept the blasting charges off the field. Yeah, they did. That's true. The blasting charges were kept in check. Yeah, Screaming Skull Catapults are really cost-effective. They're only like 700 gold, yeah. Just like in Tabletop, they're one of the best units on the Tomb King 750. One of the best units on the Tomb King's roster, hands down. Uh, so against Tomb Kings, you have a couple options with Dwarves. One option is an all-out rush. So you just get a really, really cheap Rune Lord or Thoric. Okay. You get the Rune of Wrath and Rune, and that's basically it. And you just go like super wide, and you can cut all this. So you can get Thoric, and then you just go like Mass Blasting Charges, um, Mass Dwarf Warriors... And then you can, this, if he had played this way, it would have beaten me also, probably. Like, this style of rush is just super hard to deal with. And you can actually make it even, yeah, Thoric because you can go even cheaper. Hold on. So you can get a basic Rune Lord, and you just get him on foot. Yeah. So this style is really hard for them to beat, too. And then you just, you just rush them. And if you close the distance with the Slayers and get into their backfield, it gets really messy. Because the thing is, they don't really have good answers against Slayers. I mean, their their infantry can kill Slayers, but Slayers are way faster than them. So with some micro, you can get into their backfield. Uh, or you could do an opening like this. You go like triple cannon. Maybe even double cannon is enough. Like two cannons of the dwarves would probably be able to win, right? So then you just do something like this. You get the dwarf warriors. You don't need good quality infantry against Doom Kings. You really don't. So, um, And then you just go triple blasting charge. Um, from here, you don't really want to go with gyrocopters, in my opinion, because of the carrion. The carrion are pretty good against them. And if you want to go for, like, a hero hammer squad, you can. But, um, typically, you would want to bring Felix to get passive healing. Yeah, but, like, an opening with this as the foundation would be pretty good. And then you could you could bring Bose, Bose if you want to, too. You could bring, like, a couple, um, rangers. Because rangers are really nice, because they can't be shot by, um, they can't be shot by catapults early on because of the, uh, stealth. So your opponent won't know where they are until they're already pounding like a really good value target, right? So you could go like triple and then just get like a cheap Dwarf Lord or something and have like a build like this. Something like this would be good. And then you just call in Slayers and you win the Artillery Duel and, you know, there's there's a bunch of ways for Dwarves to win that. So, uh, all right. Let's see how we're looking here. Yeah, Cannons are really good. Yeah. <laughs> Bounce Kissel by forcing them to bring a frost worm. Yeah, it's like their it's their it's their curse. The basic dwarf lord's pretty good. He's got the star metal plate, which is pretty solid. All right, so we got one match left in round three. We got Noptrum, who's a top tier Bretonian player, versus Leech Lord, who's actually playing Demons of Chaos today. So your Demons of Chaos Chad is fighting. Uh, undefeated players, no surprises. We have Serkia, Scrambled Egg Special. So Wood Elves, Beastmen are undefeated, and I don't know what Hippo's playing. Um we have a decent tiebreaker. It's not bad. It's not bad. So we're in the contention. If we win the next game, you know, we have an okay chance here at qualifying for top four. Not amazing, but... Well, this next game, I'm going to be playing a very good player. So I, I need to I need to have... Like, Charix even lost the game. I could play Charix. And Charix is, like, one of the best players in our whole community. So, uh, so I'll explain how it works. This is a single faction tournament. Before the tournament starts... Let me have some water. You declare one faction, okay? You're like, I'm pl picking Greenskins. Then that's all you play every single game. At the start of each one, you get one round. This this vertical column is a round. And then you play that opponent. And then next, when I advance it, a new column appears with a new opponent. And in that round, you play a player who has the same score as you. So every round, you play somebody who has the same score as you. Until you get to the top four. Uh, until you finish four rounds. After four rounds, the individuals who are at the top of the uh, scoreboard here will advance to the top four for a semifinal and a grand final. So that's how you do it. Yeah. Slayers do have bronze shields. Yeah, they still suffer against missiles though. Like missiles mess them up pretty bad, but yeah, the bronze shields do help. They do help for sure. Hmm. All right. Let's get it. Did they finish? How'd your games go, Pone? Are you, you carrying with the high elves? Yeah, it's, it's a good format. It's a very good format. Ah, we're done. We're ready for the next round. Let's go, baby. Good, efficient rounds. Yes. All right. Perfect. So we have... Whoa, I got Serkia again. Oh, no. 
How did that happen? Oh, it's because, here, check this out. So I'm playing the Wood Elves again. I'm playing the top Wood Elf player. The guy who's in first right now, I have to play him even though I lost the game, and I'll show you why, okay? So if we go to the news, uh, he's number one. These are the top four right now. So I'm in the top four at the moment, but I only have two wins, but my tiebreaker is very good. But unfortunately, uh, it matched Scrambled Egg Special and Hitman Hippo together, which means I have to play Serkia again. I have to play the Wood Elves again. <laughs> If I win this, though, I'm guaranteed a spot in top four, which is really good. Um, I think I should be, actually. I'm not sure. Huh. It's going to be a little bit dodgy. Well, we'll see if I get it. If I don't, ooh, maybe I don't go to top four. Because I think it counts as the same opponent score. Yeah, it doesn't, like, give you a score twice. Not sure how that's going to work. Yeah. Well, who cares? Let's have some fun. So we get to test our theory against Wood Elves again. Uh, all right. So let's get it. And let's have some fun. I'm happy to try against him again, but it's... Okay, so there we are. Pote says, no, no, I'm trash. That's why my least close match... Uh, oh, no, Pone. He's too weak. The map is going to be a big factor here as well. All right, so what do we got? The map is going to be... It's a... Ooh, it, it's a, okay. It's a, a fun one. It's a me. It's a... Matches us together for another round. He's, he's saying, he's saying, thank God it's not the dwarves on Itza. Yeah, dwarves would wreck wood elves on Itza pretty hard. So, um, he got scared for a second. Yeah, he was like, oh God, do I have to play the dwarves on Itza? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, he was. He's a good. Okay. So this is going to be interesting. We did save, uh, but it's as a different map. You need to definitely change the dynamic here of your build. The Necro Sphinx against Wood Elves is like the worst idea ever because it's close. The map is like super close range. So he's going to be able to uh, do some damage. All right. So let's see what build I had cooking earlier. Yeah, I think this is not bad. I think it ain't bad. Could just also do a couple more warriors in the opening build. Try that out. little razzle-dazzle in there. I wonder if he's going to go for like a big flying lord of some sort. Yeah, that could be a bit of an issue, right? Arkin was really good. Um, any other lord choices here? Like Cetra. Cetra could be fun on the Sphinx. But man, that Spirit Leech is really nice. It's really nice. Arkin was like such a carry that previous game. All right. So we're going to try something unorthodox here and see if it works out for us. We're going to try... Try so hard and get so far. Go triple casket. Oh, man. Triple casket is just asking to lose. So we need that. We don't need this. Uh, that's pretty good. We can cut that too. And uh, we can cut that and we can probably cut that too. Okay. So feeling pretty high tier. Should be fun. Um, we need to respect big targets. I know he likes to mix it up and sometimes go with big things. So we could also try, huh, could try this. This is going to be hog wild as hell, but it might might catch him off guard and be very good. Or I could just get wrecked, which would be fine. I don't mind casting after this. So a couple of these. Let's get you guys on the wings. Yes and yes. Do we want any of this? I mean, that is potentially a good item, but I don't think it's going to do. Dr. Cole, thank you for becoming a channel member. Greatly appreciate you. Greatly appreciate you, my friends. And uh, for the backfield, yeah, we got all the Christmas cavalry coming out. They're going to be causing all sorts of havoc. We got to put some respect on their names. The Pulchral Stalkers, um, I don't know if I like them in the Wood Elf matchup. They feel like they're just going to die to a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. So I think we omit them from our build. He could do a full... I think a full rush would be a little scary, but I, I feel ready for it. I definitely feel ready for it. Um, Ushapti are bad here because of the War Dancers. So probably just mass infantry chaff would be good. Late to the party, but I'm here to support. Yeah, we're, we're trying something new here. Today's like an exploratory stream where we, we experiment with Tomb Kings and test their limits. Test the limits of your imagination. Yes, yes. Okay, Boshopti here is another call-in. Boshopti are pretty damn good. Um, as far as dealing with large targets, I suppose we will be fine. I, have, I think I have answers for that kind of stuff. 
Uh, infantry swarm will be problematic, as is the case usually, but hopefully we'll find a way to make it work. And um, I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, it's got to be fun, man. It's got to be fun. GLHF. Good luck. Have fun. Uh, do we cut you, actually, and get another like infantry piece? It's going to be just hardwood archers everywhere. Yeah, Dryad's running afoot. DJ Kotep is so OP, it's B BMT even bring him. He's good. He's good, but he's a little boring. The Iro Titan, no, Iro Titans are so shitty. They do have to, if they if they gave Iro Titans like 15,000 HP, then then we can talk, okay? But until then, I think um I think we omit that. Oh god, the power fantasy is real. Oh, do I do it? Oh. No, I don't do it. I don't do it. Yeah, not today. HP does this have 9.6 and 10.0? Oh man, this build's just out of control. I don't know if I'm gonna, that's so haggard. So incredibly haggard. Uh, Kotep is definitely good for spell spam. He ain't bad. Um, Arkin is very, very snipeable, but you know, we're not, we're not worrying too much about that. He's gonna have healing for sure. He probably is gonna go with a rush with dragons would be my guess. Yeah, I think like a, a Draconic Rush would probably be what we're going to end up seeing from him here. All right, guys. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Nurgle's pretty bad right now. It's a shame. Kotep could be fine just hiding in the bushes, like spell spamming. But man, Kotep is really vulnerable to being sniped. Like really vulnerable against Wood Elves. But I guess if he's in the bushes casting things, it's not as big of a deal. Yeah, screw it. Let's just have fun, dude. I'm g this is going to be a fun one for you guys. You're going to like it. Win or lose, we'll go out on our shield. So, Oh, uh, man. Necropolis Knight Halberds. I wish you were good. I wish you were good here. But sadly, you're just not. You are not the best. And we are ready. <laughs> uh, Mass Snakes always wins. I can't wait. I can't wait to show you guys the uh, tabletop army when we're done. Hey, Turn, awesome tournaments, man. I've been thinking of starting a Total War multiplayer. Do you have any advice for beginners, like where to start? Yeah, honestly, Ruben, join our Discord as starters. We have a really solid community in there, and we have like an entire forum within our Discord where people discuss multiplayer matchups and whatnot. So that's a really good start. Because um, honestly, the pipeline that Creative Assembly has is really terrible. The quick battle system is awful. So um, yeah, I would definitely recommend joining our crew. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Sandstorm's here. Would have been fun, but guys, Cetra rules. He does not serve. I brought Cetra for all of you. But I'm trying to win. It's not necessarily a meme. I wanted to see how he would be on his Sphinx against a potential Wood Elf rush. So if my opponent goes with Bow Spam, I could be dead. But if he goes with the rush, I might be in good shape. All right. So we got the Tomb Guard. Obviously, very, very good unit. Uh, we can send one up there with a Skeleton Spear unit. Yes, yes. These two are going to kind of hold down the middle. Get you back here and you over on the flank. I think we just play the side here, actually. I think this is easier. The high ground is a little dodgy here. Yeah, so we're going to put you like so and then you like so in front. Great. We got Cetra on the Sphinx. Bone Saw's ready and we got a Bone Giant. I don't know how good he'll be, but he's got a lot of HP. Like... If the Wood Elves want to shoot the Bone Giant, I feel like that's going to be a lot of work for them. So, I don't know, man. We'll try it out. We'll try it out. We're going to move these guys over to the side point here and try and get that. So, all right, guys. Good luck. Have fun to my opponent. Let's have a, let's have a good one. If he if he beats us, then we will grant him uh, access to the Grand Finals. <laughs> and it is a rush, which is good. I'm, I'm glad I brought Cetra. So, um, he'll be pretty good against this. All right, so the Ushapti Great Bows need to target down the War Dancers, and the Boner Giant needs to target whatever it can shoot. So we'll just shoot at these, and um, in the meantime, you guys move over this way. I knew it was going to be a rush. Um, I knew some sort of foul rush was going to be afoot. So let's get the War Dancers here. The Bone Giant's going to start shooting, and we'll move up like so. And now we just start nailing them and hoping for the best here. And let's immediately call in some more Tomb Guard. We need to just meet his rush head on, right? So... Cetra doesn't he doesn't serve he rules after all so we're gonna we're gonna try our best here let's form ranks Cetra's gonna run in and start plowing through these guys which is awesome so let's do this and do this form ranks here and get these tomb guard to move up oh yeah look at Cetra doing work dude he's he's doing it 
And we do see the Glade Singer, the Boner Giant is shooting in and doing some respectable damage, actually. So let's get that Spell Weaver of Life down. We see the entire blob there taking quite a bit of damage. And But yeah, this is a lot of units, guys. This is a hell of a lot of units. It ain't going to be an easy hold. That is for sure. All right, let's give them Fizzrez, Spears into Dryads. You guys into War Dancers, King Scorpion Legion. <laughs> the Scorpion King, Dwayne the Rock Scorpion King. Uh, let's get some Nekar Horsemen out here to fight you. Cetra is getting some really good terror routes on these guys, too. So we're just going to kind of go for the passives. He doesn't have a lot of missiles, so that's quite good. Okay, a couple War Dancers trying to squeak their way through, but not going to make it. We will shut them down. He might find a way through in some areas, maybe. I'm not sure. We do manage to break through the middle, which is great. So let's get these guys up to the point. And let's get Cetra in the backfield to defend a little bit better. And he's trying to swarm. Yeah, you can see he's like desperation swarming here. Let's get some Nakar warriors to come in and grind with these. Get you guys fighting here. And I feel like I'm like an NFL quarterback who's being like rushed right now, you know? Boner Giant can fight pretty well here, to be honest. All right, so let's come back here, peel this off. And in the meantime, we can try and grab the high ground point. We have the Tomb Guard on the middle. The objectives haven't actually even opened up yet, which is funny. Might actually be able to get that one. All right, so let's do the Fizz Res on you. Tomb Guard are holding on pretty much every front. We're doing quite good on value. Uh, let's get a couple Skeleton Horsemen up here to prevent the free caps from him. We don't want him to get those for free. Uh, why are we not capping this right now, that middle objective? That's very strange. It looks like we should be capping it. But yeah, we're trading well, I would say. Let's continue popping the heals on units and whatnot and just see what we can do. You Shopti, we're going to keep maneuvering around. And we do get the Skeletons on the point. Uh, you guys can go fight here. And do we have any chaff units we can send up there? We do have another skeleton, so let's go send you and charge here. Cetra is getting some good routes, but I could just get stuffed back in my deployment zone. Maybe I didn't bring enough anti-infantry, geez. This is like so much. All right, Tomb Guard up on the point, duking it out. Um, we got you guys here, so let's pull you back. Pull you back here, all right. A little bit of KG fighting. We do get big terror routes there, though, so the terror routes are real. And we have a lot of healing, by the way. We have a lot of healing. So let's get this Bone Giant to start shooting into the middle again. We got our two skirmishers. We're trying to keep them from getting the objectives for free, you know? We don't want that. Eternal Guard are ITP, so that's a little bit scary, right? Um, let's give you Fizzrez on those Tomb Guard. All right, and then we have potentially some Nekar Horsemen who can come out and do a little bit of side play. So let's get you guys up. Go do this. Um, this side point has not been taken yet. I don't know, actually know how we win this fight, if we do win it. But let's just chill out on it for now. Cetra is probably going to tear out a lot of these guys. We got the Bone Giant still very much in good shape. And uh, let's get the Bow Shopty to start shooting now. Pop another damage spell on these. Great. And he's going to call in something funny over there. I don't know what. Man, how are these, like, Hagman tips doing so much damage? It's wild. They're actually doing incredible work. So that's going to be Light Cab on Light Cab. We should be favored here. Let's move out with these. Um, we do have the Ushapti Summon, which we can use. This objective is getting really close to flipping for us, which is excellent, excellent, excellent. So we can just send a warrior up there to make sure we get that. So if I can get that point, that's going to be huge. We do manage to catch his Light Cavalry right there, which is good. Our legions are fighting very well. They're fighting valiantly indeed. And uh, Cetro just keeps cleaning up these war dancers here who are shaken and give a little fizz res to these guys so they win that fight. And we do get that point. Good. So we're not like completely helpless on the objectives. We we got the point soon enough to the point where we might be okay. All right. So Shopti summon, where would that be really good? Probably right here for breaking that position. Cetro is going to continue his rampaging here and then we can get some Nekar warriors pushing up. So let's get them moving. And those guys are breaking. The Shopti summon's coming in. We do get a decent little fight right there. Our Tomb Guard on the point are doing excellent. And the Bow Shopti are going to go here. And let's do this and just get them out here. And hopefully they can get a good firing angle. Okay, so Cetra is about to route these bad boys. Let's move in. And um, yeah, we got the Warriors moving. He's going to try and get this point. Might need to call in some Nekar Horsemen to make sure we don't lose that. Because I feel I can't really afford to lose the points. All right, so let's do the heal there. So that's going to be healing everybody. We got the Haggard chasing going on with these guys, but shouldn't be too much of an issue. Bow Shopti could just pile in on those Eternal Guard, maybe. Let's just keep Benny healing a little bit. And are we going to get the high ground point? Ooh, we are chasing, but let's get some uh, some horsemen up there, stat. Catapults will not be good here. Will definitely not be good. All right, so let's fight. Let's get Satra in there to help out. Maybe we'll be able to grind through the middle eventually, maybe. Those War Dancers are holding, like, absolute raid bosses. And let's get some Tomb Guard moving up to the middle as well. And um, we got Warriors and Nehakara Horsemen coming. So he's going to charge us here, but we should be able to get this. The side is looking like it's kind of going for us, too. Uh, Boner Giant, do we have any shots? Yeah, we can get that Spell Weaver. So let's do that and get more Nehakara Warriors on the way up. We are probably up in value. 
With healing being taken into account, I would say we're in good shape. So let's drop the fat heals. This is going to be a good fight for us too right here, that, that little 2v1. If only I could get a little bit more. All right, so you guys move up. You guys move up. And are we going to get the terror out to the gods is the question. The Bone Giant's still sitting on his Lord. If we can pop his Lord off the battlefield, that'll be really nice for getting rid of the healing. Uh, these guys are damaged. Warriors are still cruising for a bruise in. We're down on points pretty heavily, but we have a fair amount of time to work with. It's not like we're uh, super constrained at the moment. So, All right, so hmm, the high ground is looking scary. Let's get some of these. Yeah, go chase down the skirmishers. You guys move to the middle. Cetra needs to get a terror out, but sadly these units are basically ITP. Bone Giant fighting it out there, being tied up by some spears. Uh, where can we go? The high ground is looking a little messy. Those are just Sisters of Thorn, though, so maybe we'll be okay. Let's uh, chase these skirmishers down, get these Nadakar warriors moving to the center. His lord is, uh, ran to the trees. So let's just keep moving. Yeah, keep moving. He's pressing, he's playing the objective super hard. Okay, we get a mass break right there. Who would have thought Cetra would be like an absolutely awesome pick here, right? But he is, he's doing great. All right, so we get the swarm on those and um, that little blob fight up there ain't going terrible. Let's get on the Eternal Guard. Let's get these Bow Shopti back. You guys can fight those Eternal Guard here and the Bow Shopti can uh, turn and start shooting at you. Yes. Maybe we just get a terror out here. The Bone Giant is in position. Start shooting some of these. How are we looking in the middle? Pretty okay. A lot of the points are going well. It's definitely going to be like a Helm's Deep type situation. Let's do the Fizzeraz on you. And um, in the meantime, do we have any good units we can call in? We can call in some more Tomb Guard. All right. So the middle is starting to, to fluctuate to us. Slowly but surely. We probably get a terror out right here. Let's get another heal on these bad boys. Shooting the, uh, the dudes from downtown here. And uh, another Tomb Guard unit. On top, would that be a good idea? Hmm, might be. Yeah, because we got to play for the triple cap. So I think we, we need to do that. All right, so we get a terror out there. The imperishable one has been doing really good. Bone Giant, unfortunately, tar pitted in spears. Let's run you guys over. And uh, these damn war dancers are just such raid bosses, dude. They didn't hear no bell whatsoever. So we're going to get Cetra and the Bow Shafti up on the point and uh, hopefully be able to get that one. So let's maneuver you guys over here. Let's get the Bone Giant over to the point as well. We still have a solid pushing presence in the middle. I would say. Let's get those Dryads, and uh, we have some more Skeleton Horsemen, so let's call them out to hunt down the Skirmishers. Tomb Guard are heading for the high ground, and at uh, this point probably is going to flip to us here. Bow Shopti, let's kill those Eternal Guard on the way in. Let's get the Boner Giant over there. We get the Terror out, so let's do a little rear charge action here. We can do Fizz Res here. The middle is just a messy fight, but we're going to do a, a big sandwich fight. Yeah, we're going to get a rear charge on him too, so hopefully it'll do it. Hopefully it'll do it. All right, so that one is going to flip to us more than likely. We do have some Glade Guards there, but I think we beat them. And the Bone Giant's going to come there, and it's going to be a very scary kind of terror position for us. Cetra might need to go help in this fight. So let's give a little bit of DPS to these from downtown. I think the fight over here is one. I think we don't have any issues there. So now we just start pushing mid too. So do we get another Tomb Guard unit? Probably a Tomb Guard is going to be the way. Yeah, probably a Tomb Guard. The Catapults aren't really good here. He's got too much pressure on me, so I feel like we just uh, we just don't do that. All right. So Cetra's going to move in. Hopefully we can start to turn the, the table on this fight. We got the Tomb Guard boys moving in and uh, more Tomb Guard. We have a little bit of time. We do have the one objective, so that gives us a little bit of work. We're up in value pretty heavily, so there's a chance he could just break. We're going to have to see how this goes. Um, maybe more horsemen call in, so I'm not sure. We see a Spellweaver. The Spellweaver obviously not going to be as impactful, right? Okay, so the Bow Shopti doing great work. Let's uh, collapse on the back of you guys. Bone Giant can just attack here. Uh, we've almost got them broken. Hopefully Cetra will get a terror out here, and the Tomb Guard are trying their best to get there, but it's taking some sweet time. All right, perfect timing. We've got some Nedekar horsemen. Let's use them to do a little bit of flanking. And uh, we do get to the point. I don't know how the Tomb Guard will do against Dryads, but let's do a little Fizzrez on you. Uh, these guys hopefully get smashed up. Not sure if they will. Probably got to call these horsemen back here because it's getting a little messy on that point. I can't afford to lose points anymore. Uh, he's already at 1,000, right? So that's very dodgy. Uh, tomb Guard here. Yeah, fight Sisters of Thorn. And do we have a speedy call in? We don't have any skeleton horsemen, which sucks. Okay. It is what it is. And um, Cetra's position. We could probably bunker bust here. Rear charge there. Get this. And let's get some skeletons moving up. This has been a really fun game, by the way. It's been really fun. All right, the Tomb Guard can jam it, and um, yeah, they're looking pretty beat up, but so am I. You know, we're not in the best of shape. This position is going to be ours, probably, so let's bring Cetra over here, and we can do the Curse Blades on you. The Bow Shopti and the Giants are trying. Uh, how's the high ground looking? Yeah, there's too many, I think. So, I don't know. Cetra's felt really good, though. He felt like he was a solid choice in this tournament here. 
But also another Lord could have done something pretty similar. So maybe just going with a wide Nehekar warrior stack would have been much stronger. Yeah, he's going to get this point here, which is bad. I don't have any like anti-infantry there, so I think we lose. We're up in value like heavily, heavily, but it's it's going to take too long. That's a, something Wood Elves can do in Dom mode, is they can play the objectives pretty scrappy like that. All right, so the Bone Daddy, maybe I should have consolidated a little bit better there before leaving it. Um, we got the Horseman coming. He's already at 1,100 points. Oof, that's a big oof right there, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so Cetra, just get in here, tear out these bad boys. Let's get the lore passive. Let's head to the middle. Um, the Tomb Guard up top do get beaten by just a swarm of units. So dry, maybe they'll make it there by the end of the game. Who knows? Okay. Okay. Pull you back. Uh, Bone Giant and Ushapti. Bone Giant's still trying over there. He's trying his best. Let's pull these horsemen back. We got you moving, but you're going to lose to the Dryads. I think he's got it. I think he's got it. Yeah, a lot of, lot of good quality infantry. Okay. Horsemen are trying. Do we come over here and maybe rally under the Bone Giant to try a little something something? I don't know. Could try a uh, full surround here. So I think uh, I think maybe just more Ushapti, actually. Like Melee Shopti would have been potentially okay. Setra has gotten only 1,400 value. Okay, so even though he was good at routing things, the Bone Giant was probably also bad. Uh, it got about 1,000 value, so... I was expecting Forest Dragons from him, actually. That's why I brought the Bone Giant, but... You know, you learn your lesson, man. It won't happen again. All right, so let's get these Eternal Guard off the objective, and you Spears, just keep you guys just keep chasing shit down there. We do have enough for another uh, flank here, so let's get you up to the middle. Yeah, so cut the Bone Giant, just go more Nehekar Warriors, all that kind of stuff, and I think you're okay. I think you're okay. GG well played, though. He played a good game. Uh, just stuffed me back. Like We're up 2k value, but with his healing taken into account, we're probably pretty even, although I do have a ton of healing, too. So we're definitely up in value, but we just don't have enough time. Yeah, we would need a lot more time, though, with his mobility. Oof. It's uh, it's serious, dude. GG, well played. We tried. I don't know the matchup. I'm learning it, and now I've learned it. I think I've seen both ends of that. So as a corrective measure, we probably keep one Bow Shopti only, okay? And if we're going to go for a Cetra build, we go into the uh, Tomb Guard spam. So let's see, maybe like this. Yeah, I think like an opening like this, honestly, would have been really good, and we probably would have won the game. It's just something like this. And then uh, catapults are okay. On, on Itza, you probably don't use them. I think it's a little bit too dangerous. But you kind of don't have too many other choices. Maybe like a couple chariots. Yeah, three chariots is too much. But I like this, like something like this in the opening army. All right, GG, well played. GG, good luck in finals. Perfect. So now we're going to get ready to cast the semis. Certainly, if I'm going to lose to someone, losing to him feels good, better because he's likely to win, has a really good chance of winning the tournament. So if we can't beat him there, then, you know, don't expect to beat him in the semis. How effective would Tomb Scorpions be? Pretty terrible. Casket of Souls could be interesting. Like a casket, yeah, on the back, because it's really hard to shut down. But the bow shops here are amazing, but yeah. Maybe like a meme casket and just sit it on top of my infantry and just shoot. You're actually, you know what? This this shit might actually be okay in this situation against that type of a build. But the problem is that's very all in. If he if he uses like a, a missile based build, then I probably lose it. Probably lose it. Yeah, that's what Catho is telling me now. Uh, he's saying chariots. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Not, I've always perceived the chariots to be pretty terrible, so I don't I don't use them, but we'll we'll try it next time. Okay, so refresh. The Arwar Tomb Guard could be good. Yeah, they could be very good too. Wow, still a lot of games being played. So no okay, gain, no gain. Moose Lord uh, are still they finished. So looking at the top four right now, we can see it coming into frame. Serkia is Serkia is coming for that number one leaderboard spot, trying to take me down. I should have played a faction I know how to play. Curses. You always always regret it afterwards. Tomb Kings, though, feel like a good investment. They feel pretty strong, to be honest. So yeah, currently... Oh, I'm never playing another game. 69% win rate, baby. That is what I am talking about. Serkia in the number two spot, beating me today. So probably if Serkia wins this, they're going to take the number one spot. And then... Um, you know who I've been winning in tournaments with is Slanesh. Slanesh has been so good. Oh man, I've been loving Slanesh. 
Uh, yeah, and Charx is playing today too. So if Serkia or Charx win, um, or Blood Penguin, they're going to be taking the number one spot on the early season leaderboard. So we'll see who's able to do it, man. We'll see who's able to do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Got another tourney tomorrow. I'm going to be out of town though. Heading up to, uh, heading up to vacation with the wife. Should be fun. It's her birthday in a couple days. So we're going to go, uh, go explore some fun areas in California. And we might have time for a land battle showdown, I think. We could try that. Uh, if anybody wants to play me in a land battle showdown, because they're fast as hell, the uh, lobby's called Turn LB, so anybody feel free to join. Let's do Gobbler S. It's a good map. We'll do like an uh, intermission one. Who do we want to play in land battle? The Chowie are always fun to try. Um, we could try... I heard Slanesh is pretty terrible in land battle, but we... Hmm. Let's play, uh, let's play some Slanesh. I know they're not very good in land battle, but we're going to try and make them work. How is Turnbull's Legend? And, uh, ah, boy, it's just, if you do something your whole life, that's just what happens, you know? Charx doesn't stream. No, I don't believe he streams. Yeah, so refreshing. Let's see how it's going to be. Uh, no finals yet. Okay. Almost. The, the, the frame is coming into, uh, into picture here. Do we get an opponent? No opponent yet. You need to have the map pack open. I know. Oh, a Druki mirror match? Well, a Druki mirror match. Oh, I can play Dark Elves for you. Yeah, I'll play Dark Elves for you, the gentleman who donated earlier. So I'm fine with that. If we can get somebody to join here. 4v4 land battle showdown. Holy shit. Maybe we could do one at the very end too. Malekith, the Witch King. People probably not able to join because of the uh, map pack. A lot of people don't have that on. Yeah, it's because you, you don't have the map pack on. Yeah, maybe a little easier for tournament players to join. Just refreshing, taking a look at things. There was Mortal Kombat in chat while you played that game over food. Was there? What was the debate? Are you guys talking about like pineapples on pizza and stuff? Microwaving your tea? You know, the next time... I have a couple of friends from the UK. And the next time one of them comes here... I'm not gonna they don't know they don't watch my YouTube channel, so they have no idea. But I am going to microwave tea. I'm gonna be like, you want some tea? I'm gonna I'm gonna put a kettle on. Okay? I'm gonna put a kettle on and I'm gonna let it whistle so they think I'm doing the tea water in the kettle. And then I'm gonna microwave their tea water and then switch it to a mug so they can't tell that the mug was microwaved. And then I'm gonna see if there's really if they really can notice a difference. I bet you they won't. I bet you they won't notice a difference. They'll have no idea. They'll be like, oh, thanks. This is great. Whatever. You know, there's no way. I bet you they won't be able to tell. Putting on pizza. Oh, man, that's that sounds pretty gnarly. Yeah. Putting on pizza. I mean, I'm pretty open minded, but you'd have to get if it's more of like a dessert pizza, then maybe that's diabolical. It's going to happen, dude. I'll film it, too. That's evidence. That's not criminal, dude. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, no one's joining, so we'll probably just go straight into the uh, next round here in a second. Just don't put the tea bag in the mug before it goes in the microwave. That's what people take issue with. Is it, though? No, I'm just talking about heating up the water. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not going to, like, the tea bag goes in after you microwave it, okay? Isn't that illegal in 32 states? Yeah, I see. There's no difference. I sometimes warm my tea in the microwave. That's right. There's no difference. There will be no difference. I agree. If they were... Yeah. Come on now. Oh, no. Pwn is here. And he's going to play... Uh, he's going to play Skaven. All right. Let's have some fun with old Pwn Dog here. So we're going to do uh, the, the elves of the darkness. So, yes. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we're going to have some fun with this. We're going to have a lot of fun with this build. All right, so I don't know how good that is. Uh, yes, 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 no. Okay, and then we can get the... I'm either going to win really quick or lose really quick. <laughs> you know, it's going to be one of those kind of games. All right, so I need a I need a caster, obviously, right? So let's do a sorceress of some sort. This is like a meme game, but it could be fun, right? It could be fun. 
Okay, so that's looking pretty good to me. Um, aside from this, we probably need to get a... Yeah, that's kind of a cool idea. All right. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> oh, this build's probably just gonna get absolutely just punished. We're gonna get it so bad. Oh, that's right, it's land battle. I should spend my extra money. Okay. Pwn is not prepared for this. He's not. Medusa spam? Then. Medusas are actually good. They're really good. Yeah, I, I like them. All right, boys, prepare yourselves. The ladies of the night, prepare to do battle. Give us the crone zone. Oh, you're getting the crone, baby. Yeah, you guessed right. All right, so let's check the website. Make sure the top four isn't ready yet and refresh the brackets. Okay, we got two games left to finish and uh, then we'll advance it. If somebody in chat could let me know when when to, uh, the rounds are finished, that'd be greatly appreciated because I can just minimize during the battle and do it. All right, so we're going for a full, a full witch elf rush. So we got witch elves with their new brews. Okay, and we got the crone. She's gonna be leading the charge. We got a sorceress here. And we do have some Sisters of Slaughter on the outside as well who are gonna be collapsing on the wings. Not that you need them against Gaven, but they're super cool, so. We also do have a shrine. Uh, shrine is gonna be there, and uh, the rest of it's gonna be like cavalry harass. Obviously. I don't know if Pwn will expect this from me. This is definitely out of character. All right. Here we go, baby. Microwaving steak is a crime against humanity. You know, as I've gotten into my 30s, I don't handle red meat as well. Like, I went to a Korean barbecue with, um, it was Subutai, Subutai's birthday the other day. And um, we went to meet him down in LA and we, we went to a Korean barbecue place. And dude, I was on the toilet for like two days. I don't know, maybe it was just, it was it was kind of like a low quality place. <laughs> or or if it was just me, but yeah, it was, it was um, yeah, you guys love it. Oh, oh, all right. Sneaky, sneaky Skaven, huh? So what do we got here, guys? We got some Gisales. Oh, no, this is like the worst situation. I literally can't catch these guys. And they're just going to kite my light armor. Oh, that feels so bad. All right, so let's get you guys to go over here and you guys to go over here. And um, we need to just collapse on the back of these stupid rats here. Dude, that's like the hardest counter to us. I should have known. Pwn always goes Eshin. <laughs> Oh god, we need to cut them off though. If I'm able to get them with my mobility, then maybe we have a chance. All right, so we're gonna get the elite. Oh, dude, it's Gotham's reckoning. His death runners are gonna get just slapped by my my sisters here. All right. So these witch elves got punished, but we're about to get a good collapse on them here. And um, we do see the rat. The crone bone needs to advance up. Okay, so that's gonna be a couple of these guys shut down here. So let's hit this and this. Let's get the sorcerers back and uh, let's fight. Oh, he does get the Deathmaster Sigil now. All right, so let's get the Burning Head right down the old pipe. Oh, and the shrine knocks him away. Hell yeah, dude, let's go. All right, so we catch a lot of the skirmishers, like a whole bunch of them. Get a big Burning Head down the rats and dude, the Shrine of the Gods. Oh, yes. So Cronebone is going to go ahead and pop the uh, Gaze of Cain. Let's do that here to give them a ton of stats. Oh, it just rampages them. I forgot about that. Holy shit. Oh, this is chaos. I have no idea how this is going, to be honest. Uh, witch elves into the Skaven Slaves. Shrine's doing well. Witch's Brew. And Witch's Brew. Pop the Witch's Brew. Sisters of Slaughter go over here. We need to get all those skirmishers offline. The skirmishers are the scourge of the earth. And if we can kill them, then we're okay. All right, let's get you around the outside. Sisters can go there. I think my elves might start bumping and grinding pretty well here. We do see Homie here. He's pretty beat up. My, my characters are out of control. And let's get on the gutter runners back there. Get these witch elves to go here. Oh, Sorceress is getting it. And Deathmaster is coming for the kill on my Sorceress. So Crone has done the job. We have two, we have two massive meme builds going at it. And uh, what are these little ninja star characters? All right, we should be able to dodge that. Oh, no, not quite. Okay, we didn't quite dodge it. But Deathmaster is trapped in a bunch of Sisters of Slaughter now. So he could get it. Oh, we actually found Natty Boobos back there too. All right, that's going to be a big value jump for us when we get them. All right. So where's the crone Hellebron? She needs to go and, and take down Deathmaster if we can. That would be really sweet. All right, let's get you and you guys fight those. We have our burning head caster. There's not too many good burning head targets, to be honest. Um, I think we just try and get these rats here. So we'll do that. That should hit them pretty good. 
And now Crone Hellebron's going to rampage. Yeah! <laughs> All right, so we got some mobility back. Let's get on the skirmishers. The uh, Sisters of Slaughter are just going to massacre these uh, triads, probably. But we need to get some support. Dude, all of his ninja stars are just such a good t tech against me. I shouldn't have rampaged Crone, dude. Yeah, that was a mistake. Well, it is what it is. All right, so yeah, you guys chase there. He's almost out of ammo. The Sisters of Slaughter are getting some work done, but... Yeah, Deathmasters, he's not feeling too great, Mr. Stark. He's hes in a little bit of danger here. So let's get the Shrine to chase, and let's get you guys to move on top of those, and you guys go here, and get these cavalry around the back to try and get on the Sharpshooters. Let's actually camp them over here. No, he's already shooting at us. All right, so Crows of Cain, come back in. You guys come over the top. If we kill Deathmaster, we probably just win. Yeah, see, so he's at negative 10. There's a bunch of naked women chasing him. Uh, although he's a Skaven, so he probably doesn't enjoy that. Oh, dude, the, the crone. It's crone in time. The gaze of the crone is upon us. He did probably not expect the full meme build here. No, I don't think so. But yeah, dude, look at these little Eshin sorcerers getting pounded by the crone. They're getting some of that granny action right now. Oh, but all the skirmishers are so scary. I need the war shrine to carry me into the sunset. You know, it needs to happen. Uh, crone Hellebron has gotten the Eshin sorcerers. Deathmaster is basically dead. Um, the shrine? Oh, we can't afford to get the shrine caught in freaking triads, dude. Come on now. That's like really bad. All right. Let's get you guys back. Bring you up. We got all the characters down, so the Skaven leadership core is offline. I can't seem to get away here. And the crone, do we have anything fast that can chase him? All right. So, yeah, we can get the sorceress. Let's do a little burning head down here. Make sure we don't nail our own units. We need to kill his lord to get the leadership penalty, 100%, and get Sisters of Slaughter on those. All right. So, we're scrapping, guys. Do I have any Witch's Brew left that I forgot to use? Oh, yes, the Witch's Brew. All right, you guys go here. Yeah, Deathmaster got hit by my lord on the horse. I think we got it. I think we got it. <laughs> He's getting some Granny action, yeah. All right, Granny's coming for it, dude. She's going to make him some cookies right now. Uh, we need to get those damn Gisales offline. Here we go, here's one. Witch's Brew. Rampage. <laughs> Lose control. All right. I think, I think our meme build has prevailed, which is barely. Uh, I need to get those Gisales offline because they're the only thing that can hurt Granny. 82 HP on Deathmaster. He's probably not worth chasing at this point. I don't think he can do anything, so unfortunately, he's going to get away. Uh, oh, the Eshin Sorcerer. Oh, the Ninja Stars. All right, we need to get him. The Shrine is still rampaging about. Uh, we see the Gisales. Come on, Grandma. Dock and, dock and dodge and... Dodge. My brain isn't working. Dodge. Oh, we dodged him. We dodged him, baby. Let's go. I don't know where that Eshin Sorcerer went. He used his little smoke bombs. Uh, the Shrine is just going to keep ninja starring everything, basically. The Gisele should be offline. Grandma's in good shape. Talk about a, a good match, right? And let's keep scaring this way. The Burning Head was good. No, I'm, I was super, I'm super focused here, obviously. All right. So we're probably going to potentially get ninja starred to death, guys. We need Deathmaster. Okay, okay, here we go. Oh, man. Oh, God, it got me. Get that little rat. Okay. He broke from the overcast. I think the shrine carries me, though. I don't think he can beat the shrine. Let's get Grandma in here. God, the fact that she rampages herself is so haggard. Yeah, the triad should lose to the witch elves here. Do we still have a witch's brew in the pocket? We do. Yes, witch's brew. That's going to make their stats insane. All right. So the Skaven are running out of steam. We need to get that other Eshin sorcerer before he gets Grandma. Grandma with the dreaded 600 value. Uh... Okay, hold on a sec. Is is the brackets done? I'm refreshing. Yeah, looks like we're ready for top four. So I'm going to refresh that, and then I'll advance to top four. Sorry, I minimized for a sec. I think we got this one, though. The shrine is going to be too much. I believe it causes terror, right? Yeah. Great. Let's get you guys in there. Let's keep hunting that little Eshin sorcerer. Grandma needs to use the Gaze of Cain here to... Oh, I forgot it rampages! Oh, no! Get that Eshin sorcerer! Sisters of Slaughter are going to be, like, impossible for him to kill, probably. Deathmaster at 82 HP is... Okay, it's rampaging after the right target, though. That's good. So, it could have been worse. Give me the mass leadership break. Come on, Granny. 400 HP. Oh! Oh, I got her! Granny, no! Okay, mass route, though. I think that's going to be it for this Gaven. The Shrine, the Bloodrack Shrine, was the carry this time. I don't even know what it does. Ooh, lead oh, wow. Leadership debuff, too. That's really good against Gaven. All right, let's get on those Gaven slaves. Uh, the Shrine, yeah, that's it. GG. Oh, my God. Meme battle. Okay, that one might be worth casting separately. That one was bonkers. Yeah, the beginning was really bad. Like, all my light armor into his gutter runners? Jesus, that was just horrific. 
but Granny was able to pull it out, just barely. So, um, yeah, GG, well played. That was a really fun match, Bone. Good game, dude. Make sure there's no drama with the top four. So we got Serkia, Hitman, Scrambled Egg, and uh, Troge. And it uh, looks like everybody's done. And let's advance to the top four and have some fun. <laughs> Get down, Mrs. President. <laughs> Somebody jumped in front of the crown, I know. I know. That's not, definitely not a Dark Elf characteristic. All right. So let me go to the Discord. All right. Uh, let me go to the tournament chat. Sop 4 is ready. Is ready. So who is playing in the top four? We're going to see what the matches are. So Serkia. Uh, Serkia versus Scrambled Egg. And then the other matches are going to be Sofa or Foja versus Hitman Hippo. Okay. Almost ready, guys. Sorry. Hitman Hippo versus, and how the hell do you spell his name? T. Okay. Good luck. Have fun. So we have a Beastman versus, let me see what these guys are playing, okay? Which helps easily 1v1 uh, Sisters of Slaughter now, which is funny. Yeah, because of the Rampage, but their sustained fighting won't be as good. Like they'll have a burst, but they'll run out. Whereas the Sisters would be better against Dwarves probably for long-term grinding, but I don't know. Sisters of Slaughter are also way tankier. Yeah, it's a bit of a trade-off. All right, so let's do a poll. So we have Beastman versus Wood Elves. And then the other matchup is going to be what? So who's playing? So we got, uh, who did I say was in the top four? Was it Noctrum? No, Leech Lord didn't make top four. It's going to be Hitman Hippo. That's who it was. Okay. So Hitman Hippo is playing. Um, I'm looking for his declaration right now. They're going to take a minute to get their um, lobbies going anyways. So Hitman Hippo is playing Dwarves versus uh and then his opponent here okay what are you playing my friend what are you playing lizardman i think the wood elf beastman game will be more fun so we're probably going to do that because like it's the dwarf lizardman it's just going to be a haggard armor grind i think if we in Serkia, it'd be fun to cast the person who beat us too and keep that going lobby code please and we will uh, jump in and cast. Thank you guys for joining today. It's been a fun one. Had to get a fat Total War tourney in before heading out of town. Uh, I'll be back on Saturday or Sunday. So, um, yeah, that's the game plan. Like the stream where we put microwave pudding on your pizza. Wow, that's getting real heavy here. Yeah, yeah, I agree with the Beastman Wood Elf thing. I think that's going to be way more fun. Uh, and spec slide. Who's he playing against? He's playing against, let me see whose lobby it is. All right, so I messaged both of those mighty champions. No spec slot has emerged yet, but we'll join in just a moment. The poll's pretty conclusive. Yeah, Beastmen are, Beastmen are good. Beastmen are good. They're, they're not bad at all, man. They're very solid factions. The Zangor has got a big rework, in case you guys are a little bit newer. They're not like as tanky or raid bossy anymore. They're like more cheap kind of in between a gore and a best gore, which is what they always should have been. So um, Zangors are fine now. They're very good though. Vanguard, Silver Shields, good combat sets. Um, you know, they're good. Hey, Captain, everything's going well. Everything is going well. All right. So we got the lobby code, baby. Let's get in there. We got our first semifinal match. We're just going to be casting this one and then going on to the grand finals after that. His lobby name is Weeb. <laughs> That's funny. We're going back to Warhammer 1 meta. We are. Yeah, Wood Elves and Beastmen are both very good in Warhammer 1. They both got early updates, so they jumped ahead of a lot of factions. And Orion pick. Orion is probably not bad against Beastmen, actually. He causes terror. He's mobile. He's got good, he's got good tools. Uh, killing large threats like Vestigors and Minotaurs. I would totally pick Orion, maybe. But it's going to be Beastmen versus Hardwood on the Dusted Step. Yeah, best of gores I probably wouldn't bring here. Like, or, again, or even against Lizardmen. Because why would you bring... Because best of gores just get wrecked by Croxagores. There's no sense in bringing them. 
Yeah. The only matchup in which Bestigors might be okay, niche or like maybe dwarves. Um, maybe against some of the Chaos factions, you could wing them. Like maybe against like Slanesh, they would be good against the Whip Warriors potentially. I don't know. Bestigors are kind of a meme unit. They're they're um they're also like that in tabletop. I feel the Bestigors. Yes. Two of my favorite factions to watch. Yeah, today's tourney's been fun, man. So we, we learned about Tomb Kings a little bit. You know, we learned about the Wood Elf matchup very well. Um, we had two decent wins with them aside from that. Lost to Wood Elves twice. Oh, you're talking about the Korox Man Rippers. Oh, yeah. Korox Man Rippers, maybe. Maybe. Against Lizards, you're good. Yeah, I would say yes. But you just still got to watch out. Elite Infantry get nukes. I think just Ungor Raider spam with, like, Minotaurs is always pretty good. Yeah. All right, so the players are setting it up. They both picked their fancy banner so they can look extra, extra spicy. Got it. Thank you. So the winner of this lobby will play either the dwarves or the lizard men on the other side. So that should be pretty cool. Should be pretty cool. Meatloaf, oh yeah. You guys remember that? What movie was that? That was Wedding Crashers with Mom the Meatloaf, yeah. They really don't make a lot of good comedy movies anymore. That's for sure. The early 2000s and late 90s was like a prime time of comedy gold. Like the whole Anchorman era. You know, a lot of good Will Ferrell movies. Like the late 90s had some good comedy too. Like the OG Adam Sandler movies were really fun. Like Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. And then, you, you know, you got into the later 90s. And I, you know what movie I love is The Night at the Roxbury. God, I love that movie. That was like one of my childhood favorites. Uh, Kung Pao, Enter the Fist, obviously, but then you got like the 2000 cycle of um, like Beer Fest, Old School, Anchorman, um, Harold and Kumar, yeah, the White Castle series. There was some, there was some good comedy movies back then, man. You know what this this time does well though is like you know you got to give each each kind of time period its props, you know, because even though we like comedy isn't really good anymore in in terms of movies. Um, Man, do they they do some like the modern technology and what they're able to do for movies like like Dune, for example, like the the that really intense grim dark sci fi. Man, like they could not have made a movie of Dune's caliber twenty years ago, right? I mean, okay, like Lord of the Rings, yes, but I'm talking about science fiction without it looking really haggard, you know. Night at the Rock's very big trouble in Little China. Yeah, those are great. Tropic. Oh, I love Trop Tropic Thunder. Was like the end, like Tropic Thunder, Zoolander, Borat. Oh yeah, old school. Tropic Thunder was like the end of that era of like good comedy. That was like 2008, 9, 10, right? And then I remember after that, there was like a massive drop off in comedy movies. Oh my God, American Pie, I love that, yeah. Yeah, so Dune 2. Dune 2 is probably one of my all-time favorite movies. Top three, easy. Like I would put it up there. The Lord of the Rings, I just bunched together as one movie, the trilogy. Lord of the Rings, Gladiator, and Dune, I would say maybe are my top three. Like, those are so good. Although I really love the original Blade Runner. That movie is great, too. Um, but yeah, Dune 2 is in my top three easy. It's like, I want to go see that again. I want to go see it again. It was that good. If you guys haven't seen it, it's amazing. The cast is awesome. The the effects are awesome. The, the setting, just everything is just so good. The ambience they capture for each of the, um, each of, like, the characters is just such perfection. Lord of the Rings, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I feel like Dune wasn't made for a younger audience. So I don't know. Yeah, because you could say it's this generation Star Wars, but Star Wars is much more childish than Dune. Um, I think Star Wars appealed to kids more, like back in the day, and adults as well. Um, but Dune, like when I went to the theater, there wasn't in a single like... Usually when you go to like a pre-release of a movie or like an early release, the whole theater, at least where we go to, is like packed with teenagers. There was not... It was all adults. Like there was maybe a couple teenagers... Yeah. Dune Messiah is already being filmed. Hell yeah, dude. Let's go. Blade Runner 2049. Uh, you know, Blade Runner 49, 2049, the new Blade Runner movie was done by the same director, Del Dennis Villanueva. Yeah, it was great. Hey, thank you for the donation, man. Thank you, Concord. Hey, dude, thanks for the turning. You're welcome. Thank you for your support, man. Oh, I love the Hangover movies. Oh, at least the first one. I don't, I don't know. I saw the second one, I think. I don't remember about the rest. If you aren't counting Andor, yeah, Star Wars is childish. Now, yeah, Star Wars always kind of was a little bit, you know, a little bit like that. Although, I guess the original Return of the Jedi had some dark sub-themes in it. Yeah. 
All right, guys. So this is going to be fun. These are two top leaderboard players. They both kind of uh, perused the top of the tournament scene for quite some time. So this should be a fun fight between these two mighty champions. I know, they just need to have Dennis Villanueva do everything. It was great. Um, there was, I have some minor, like extremely minor criticisms of the movie, but overall, yeah, it's uh, it's great. So Dune Messiah will probably be the last one they make a big movie out of because it gets a little bit kind of wild after that. Dune Messiah concludes the story of, of Paul Atreides um, for the most part. Obviously, there's a whole legacy left and whatnot, but it, it, it kind of concludes his story. Um, and it's... A little bit more contained when you get into the next book so when you get like the you know the big worm man and uh <laughs> it gets a little a little nuts yeah i think some of the later books would be yeah god emperor and children of dune yeah it'd be hard it'd be hard all right guys here we are it's going to be uh Nerexa here on the forces of the wood elves and he is going to be rocking the sisters of twilight so very good pick against Beastmen. They can snipe Minotaurs safely from their uh, big beast. And on top of that, they cause terror and can kill lords and things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. We got Eternal Guard, a great unit. Anti-large, armor piercing, good leadership, and just an insanely good unit. And in the tree line, we do have Dryads. It's got to be triple Dryads. Dryads are also good here. They do lose to Zangors uh, pretty decisively. But, uh, well, it's not as decisive as you would think after the changes. But, yeah, they're, they're nice. They're good at clearing out chaff. We got a couple Deepwood Scouts with these Swift Shiver Shards. Beastmen don't really lock rock a lot of armor like outside of bestigors and their chariots there's not much armor so bringing these guys swift shiver shards have shorter range but they hit super super hard right so yeah the deepwood scouts with the swift shiver shards are going to be the way now looking at the beastman army it is going to be a zangor front line backs with raiders raiders are really good because they have stock so they can ambush the wood elves a little bit uh they sneak up and can start shooting and the wood elves can't really plan for them super easily zangors butchers of kalkengard probably the auto take for the beastman Butchers of Kalkengard are very, very good. And it is going to be Morgur the Pimp Gave here in the back. He's got his claw. And yeah, he's great. Like, what else? You know, even a dragon will take a long time to kill him. So he just sits on the objective and does his thing. Yeah, 40k was massively inspired by Dune. It's, yeah, it's not subtle at all. I mean, 40k is like... I mean, a lot of a lot of franchises were basically, you know, were inspired by Dune and, you know, ripped it off in many ways, right? Like, in 40k, you have, like, this God Emperor figure, among a bunch of other things, right? The technologies... In Dune, you have the Butlerian Jihad. You have the whole rebel against AI, which 40K basically just copied. They're like, oh yeah, let's let's have that in our story as well. Tons of similarities. And even Star Wars. Star Wars has, um, you know, a very classic Messiah figure, right? You have Anakin Skywalker, who's like the chosen one. He's he's the, uh, the Messiah, whatever, you know. Uh, he was supposed to bring balance to the Force. You get the whole picture, but then he has like a bit of a tragic downfall. And uh, I'm not going to spoil too much about the Dune stories for you guys but there is a even though paul atreides of course is the protagonist there is a lot of tragedy that comes from his actions so there's there's many many things like that many things yeah navigators you have the guild navigators who are like mutated who fold space time and help the man travel the uh, dune universe and in 40k you have the navigators who basically are psychers who do something similar um yeah so a lot of stuff like that starcraft is definitely yeah i don't know about the starcraft lore as much can't answer that but um Star Wars also had a droid revolt in the Ishlor, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Anyways, enough ranting about that. Hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, it's go time. So Spear is going to be playing for the triple cap. So we do see Nerexa moving for all three objectives here. Okay. A little bit dangerous against Beastmen. Beastmen are pretty good at overwhelming points quickly. This has always been a fast and furious matchup, right? Like, Centigors, I think, are one of the best assets you have in this matchup as a call-in. I would imagine that Scrambled Egg is going to be rocking for Centigors. Centigors do defeat Wood Elf Light Cavalry pretty well. They have shields and are fast as hell. So that is, um, yeah, that's going to be probably one of the things that we see getting called in. Blackhorn's Ravagers lurking, waiting to do battle. They will crush the Eternal Guard, but he's probably a little bit wary of an ambush right there. These are cunning beastmen. They're, uh, they're the smartest beastmen of the herd who have emerged in battle here. And what will the Angor Raiders be shooting? Probably the Dragon, although the Sisters of Twilight do have a free heal, which is crazy good. You can join Destiny. So if you get them below 20% and you don't finish them off, they just heal for 25% of their HP. It's insane. It's very good. So oftentimes they're just something you kind of ignore, but it's not fun to ignore them. You can route them off the battlefield as well. So first breath attack is going to be coming in from the Forest Dragon. Oh, and he moves back into it a little bit. That was unfortunate. Yeah, so those guys get roasted. They do lose a handful of models and... Uh, yeah, they're going to be taking a bit of a beating there. Objective's going to be opening the Beastmen a little bit slow on the far side here. So they unfortunately just let the Wood Elves have that objective for free. Whereas they could have contested that one. But now the Brayhorn has been sounded. The fighting in the front line is going to be underway. 
as Zangors will be clashing with Dryads, and the Swift Shiver Shards are going to be in the secondary line, getting ready to uh, unleash some Hellish Salvos, for sure into the Butchers of Kalkengard. So Butchers of Kalkengard get wrecked by the Dragon Shot, so Sisters of Twilight do have an anti-large missile attack, and the Deepwood Scouts are also shooting into them as well. So Scrambled Egg Special blundering pretty hard in the front with the Butchers of Kalkengard. I'm not sure why he would send them right up the middle like this and just get karate chops, but it looks like Norexa is going to take advantage of this and get it going. So, yeah, that is rough. We do see a Chaos Spawn Summon coming out from Morker, and the Butchers of Kalkengard did manage to keep 15 of their 16 models. So if they retreat and heal, that could be very nice. Awakening of the Wood, that's what she said going down on the old Ungol Raiders. And uh, honestly, that Raider Fire is doing really good work. We see the value being pulled back. Much of the value the Wood Elves have is tied up onto the Butchers of Kalkengard. The Zangors in the front line do lose, though. The War Dancers get in. Give him the dirty, and now Morker the Shadow Gave is going to have to figure it out. But what the hell is this? A wild Jabber Slythe coming in. The Jabber Wookie. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a potentially a decent fighter. It does have a Mortis Engine effect. It is conditional, but even still, it can hit nearby units. The Aura of Madness. And it is draining down the Eternal Guard, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're being afflicted by the Aura right now. And are these ones? Uh, they are as well. So a little bit of Mortis from the Jabber Wookie. I don't hate that at all. On the side point, we do see the objective was yielded to Scrambled Egg, so the Wood Elves did a bit of a tactical retreat. Ungor Raider's doing a lot of work, and it looks like the Beastmen are starting to kind of roll this game a little bit. The Jabber Wookie is still running around, rampaging. We do see the Centigors, so they moved in to do battle with the Sisters of Thorn, who did get the uh, Traitor Kin slapped on them. And now Sisters of Thorn going to be in a 2v1 battle against the Centigors here. Dragon Breath attack on the objective as well, nails the Zangors down. And the Jabber Wookiee still flying around, and wherever he goes, Doom follows. He's getting some nice terror routes. Far objective owned very comfortably by the Beastmen. Middle objective still owned by the Wood Elves. Very, very good leadership, of course. That's going to be a really good Awakening of the Wood, and uh, nails those units pretty well. But those Ungor Raiders have been allowed to shoot for a long time. Granted, Wood Elves don't really have excellent tools for shutting them down. And the Butchers of Kalkengard, despite a very early blunder, have been able to recover, and they've only lost one model. So their fighting power is still really good. And they're going to be healing non-stop. Now there's going to be a rear charge coming in for the Beastmen. And here they come. And that's a big ram. Oof. Those Eternal Guard get crushed. They get turned into old red pace right there. So Jabber Scythe fighting in the pits over here with the Centigors. Terror Route's coming down from both sides. Jabber Wookie is going to be Mortis Engineing these units. Uh, they have met the condition. I forget the condition of his Mortis Engine. It's if their leadership is lower than 50%. So as they get beat up. And man, talk about a good Traderkin too. That's a nice energy, right? Traderkin, lower their leadership, uh, do a lot of damage, slow them down, then Jabber Wookie comes in and does some work. Sisters of Twilight are a big problem though, but objective number three is going to be flipping to the Beastmen here. So we do see the Butchers of Kalkengard and the Zangors hanging pretty comfortably right there, while Jabber Wookie continues to bounce around. What a cool stream today. We've been able to see so many neat things. We got to see Old Cetra and then the Jabber Slife in combat. It's been, uh, it's been a fun one. Over towards Objective 1, how are we looking? Um, Beastmen are just chasing off these Eternal Guard, but we do see an ambush from the Wood Elves, so I do like this. Having the Deepwood Scouts just kind of slowly pick off these uh, Blackhorn Dravagers and open up that point for a later time. Middle is owned by the Wood Elves, and the Beastmen are holding on to Objective 3, clutching it uh, in their little beast hooves or stepping on it, whatever they do. I don't know if they have hooves for hands, but I suppose not. They are all mutated after all. Probably a little bit of housekeeping needs to be done by the Beastmen as well. We see a couple units that probably could be unsummoned. Ungor Raider is going to move up into the Sisters of Twilight. Jabber Wookie is not a very good fighter against enemy SEs. He's not like helpless. He still has 450 and decent combat stats with poison, but he is holding the Sisters of Twilight in place to an extent while the missiles in the back maybe are going to be able to saturate in. Uh, the Sisters also don't want to get caught out by the Butchers of Kalkengard. That would be very, very bad for them. Morker, in the meantime, leading a charge in the middle. It looks like he did get a Chaos Spawn Summon. It was probably his second one. The one that goes from a unit being low HP. And Morker and company trading very well. The Zangors in tandem with the um, the Spawn here. Yeah, they're doing some really, really good work. Tearing apart the Dryads, and these Dryads are getting mashed by uh, the Spawn as well. Awakening of the Wood going down. And the Beastmen looks like they might be rotating into a triple cap here. We see them kind of uh, feeling comfortable on this objective. Centigors do overextend to their death, but a couple Zangors... And the Bray Shaman still lurk nearby. Raiders can rotate to either point. So you could grab these two Raiders like this. And they could shoot any number of directions, right? So they could go this way. They could go this way. The shaft could point wherever it pleases. But the Butcher is rotating away from the missiles. There's a fair amount of missiles over here with these sisters and different poking units. But the Minotaurs are going to be rotating away. So they're um, rotating towards the middle to get away from the missile pieces. You guys knew it was coming. Let's not, let's not you know, let's not mince words here. So how are the Gores doing? Uh, they're bashing these Eternal Guard pretty well. Centigore is going to be chasing down the Deepwood Scouts here. That's going to be a bit of a rough charge. So here it comes. They get the big flank, and down they go. So those uh, archers are going to get pounded pretty good. Deepwood Scouts are okay in combat, but they're not going to have a good time against the uh, Centigores. That is for sure. 
on the middle point, currently owned by the Wood Elves, but it is uh, flipping. The Beastmen do have Zangors, and the Jabber Wookiee is there. Kind of looking like a bit of a Beastmen takeover. Though the game is close, they both have access to healing. Morker heals, and the Butchers of Kalkengard have been healing. Uh, Sisters of the Twilight may be going to be able to work something back, but I just think the Beastmen have kind of taken over this game. Deepwood Scout Surge is barely alive over here, and we do see the Blackhorn Dravagers probably defeating that Eternal Guard, giving the Beastmen even more play on the side. Jabber Wookiee's rampaging, dude. This guy has just been running all over. He's only gotten about a thousand value so far, but his terror presence and all of that is, um, it's been great. He gets a rear attack into the sisters, does appear to make contact. Butchers of Kalkengard still alive, up to about a thousand value as well as we see the Raiders shooting into the advancing Wood Elf units. Ungor Raider is such a cost effective unit, just so cheap and um, stalwart. And actually, they do okay in combat with the Primal Fury. You can see their melee attacks 25. They could definitely fight off like light cavalry to an extent, um, although Glade Riders will still kill them. But yeah, I don't see the Wood Elves getting this point back. Wood Elves going to try and kind of get a terror position in the middle. Morker the Shadow Gave just grinding down Dryads, doing what he does best. He doesn't do magic damage, which is weird. Morker the Shadow Gave is literally a, um, like a, a, like a warped chaos monstrosity who's filled with the energies of the warp, basically, and chaos, and he's just constantly mutating. You think a creature like that would like be magical in nature, but yeah, probably just an oversight by CA. A little bit of a flavor fail there. But uh, the old sisters, they're getting grounded down by the Jabberwocky and the Butchers of Kalkengard. But we see some cavalry coming in. And now Nerexa is going to be caught in a position which I was earlier, where even though you may be able to outvalue your opponent, you know, you've been pushed back so heavily that it's going to be hard to wrestle the objectives. And Beastmen are what I like to call a very, very good fast response faction. They respond very quickly to threats, incredibly fast. And uh, it's tough. It's very tough. So sisters here are going to get charged and um, taken down. Beastmen coming in with Centigors here as well. Up in the sky, we do see the Sisters of Twilight chasing down the uh, Gore Herds here. And uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to get the middle from Jabberwookie, guys. The Beastmen just seem so much more numerous. I mean, the Wood Elves basically just have their big dragon character, Dryad, and a couple Haggard Spear units coming up. But there's no way. Zangors will beat Spears decisively. Centigors surrounding the Sisters again, shanking them down. And the Butchers of Kalkengard, these things do not understand what the meaning of a bell is. They do not know. And Jabber Wookiee, once again, uh, gonna be terror routing units. Uh, although there's a lot of ITP on Wood Elves, but we'll see if the more detention comes into play. I think this game's over. Um, I've casted enough domination games to see the riding on the wall. Um, sisters are gonna get routed here and their healing will proc. So once they get below 20%, you're gonna see them start to heal. So if you get, they get hit a little bit more, you're gonna see this little aura up here above them. Uh, they're not quite below 20%, I don't think. And now they should be. Is it proccing yet? Ooh, Trader Kin. That's brutal. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, so Sisters are going to heal after 25 seconds. But the Trader Kin and the Jabber Wookiee and the Butchers might just get the kill here. 600 HP. We see the Sisters running, but Jabber Wookiee is taking no prisoners. It is hunting the Sisters of Twilight down, loping through the air. And negative 41 leadership. And that is going to be it. Jabber Wookiee with the steel chair. And down goes the Sisters of Twilight. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that that beast would do so well this game? GG well played to the old Scrambled Egg special. He did great, and so did Nerexa. Nerexa had a good run today. It certainly showed me how to play Tomb Kings. And uh, yeah, always a champion of the Wood Elves. The last tournament we had uh, a night or two ago was won by Nerexa. So Scrambled Egg special coming in with the steel chair. Uh, all right, well played to Nerexa. Awesome Wood Elf play. Great beast men play too. I would never have guessed in a million years the Jabber Scythe would be so effective. It does look like Wookiee. Yeah, Wookiee had like a hunched spine and was like, had all these deformities. So it's very, very accurate representation of my, my late dog. Yeah, Anna, Anna agrees. I think is what she said. All right, guys. So now we go on to the grand finals. Traderkins were great. Jabber Wookiee was awesome. Zangor has held the front line. Ungor Raiders probably got good value too. For, yeah, they about paid for themselves. Nothing too crazy. 900 on that one. Morker, of course, a problem as well. All right, guys. No, it's called the Jabber Slife. Yeah, we just call it Jabber Wookie because it's funny. All right, so finals. And um, I will host it and I will invite Scrambled Egg Special. And let's find Scrambled Egg. Finals lobby. So let's see who won on the other side. Refresh this. The Beastmen have a reason to use Centigors of Zinch. Yeah, in a couple matchups, yeah. I would say so. Not against Wood Elves, but if you need like... I like Centigors of Zinch a lot against Grand Cathay because they can crush the Cathay mobility and also like dive the armor as well. I think Centigors of Zinch have a couple applications. Sounds good. GG well played. Uh, that just adds more time. And to be fast. 
Maybe I will. All right. So it is time. And uh, we're going to be in the grand finals in just a moment. Scrambled Egg Special is here. The map for the grand finals is going to be the Haunted Vale. I forget what that one looks like off the top of my head. I know it's a cool map. Yeah, it's like, I think we played Haunted. Did we play Haunted Vale earlier? I don't know if we did. Uh, I don't think Random Gamer is the winner. So let's see here. Going to grab a drink and be right back. Sounds good, buddy. And let's go and finalize the original tournament and see. I need to root for uh, Scrambled Egg. I, although I think now that Nerexa has lost, my, my number one leaderboard spot is safe for now. <laughs> I think it is. All right. So let's finalize this one. Kislev's banned just because they're in this format. There's no banning. So you, you can't, you can't like, Kislev doesn't have any bad matchups. Your random gamer, Lucas. Hey man, how's it going? You ambushing us, huh? Kislev has no bad matchups in domination. None. Um, so yeah, it's kind of unfair to put them in a single faction tournament because there's literally, they have no, they're favored in every matchup basically. It feels pretty bad. Okay. The sled is one of the reasons, but it's not even the worst, you know. Um, yeah, the, the the factions that maybe do best against Kislev would be like Greenskins and Beastmen, maybe. Lore of Grandma, I know. All right, so we got Hitman Hippo in the Grand Finals. Ooh, this is going to be a heavyweight lobby. We got two mighty champions here. We got RTK versus an outsider. Hitman Hippo is a great person, though. Uh, all right. Finals lobby. So I think it's going to be... Is it Lizardmen versus Dwarves? I don't know. Dwar it's either Lizardmen versus Dwarves or Dwarves or... Yeah. Lizardmen or Dwarves. I'm not sure which one it is. I don't know why they buffed Little Grom. That was so stupid. It's like as if it was already a great thing. And they're just like, let's give Little Grom just a fat anti-large on top of its already obscene damage. Are you excited for Age of Mythology? Dude, I never played it. So that for me, that would be diving into it fresh. But yeah, I would take a look. Kislev has like the best infantry in the game, probably. They have the best cavalry in the game. They have good lords of magic, really powerful characters, some of the best healing in the entire game, although that was nerfed today, which is good. But they're just kind of the best at everything. Yeah. Excellent shooting. Top tier artillery. I mean, they literally do it all. And every, they have a ton of undercosted units that and they're they're just it's it's nuts what they're able to do. Yeah. What's worse today? The Kissel of today or the Slanesh of launch? Ooh, that's a tough one. Probably Kissel of today. Kislev was not this strong at launch, but CA just added, they obviously got a ton of broken stuff in the update and they got some buffs that they probably didn't need. Yeah. All right. So dwarves versus beastmen. All right. Will the Jawi survive the onslaught of scrambled egg special? It is time. Let the nerglings feast. By the way, uh, have any of you guys checked out that, that strategy game? It's called Millennia. I think it's being published by Paradox. It was something I was curious if I should check out, but wanted to see if any of you guys had dove into it yet. It's it looks like a like a civilization type game. Yeah, Kislev was yeah, but like Kislev also was weaker because of how domination used to be. When domination mode came out, it was awful when it first launched. In retrospect, at the time, it was something you know we were excited, something new, like a balanced multiplayer that doesn't need player rules. Um, but it, it cl clearly we saw some problems as time went time went on. Star, you did really good. Thanks to the tournament. Had some great games. It was unexpected that I would play in top four. Yeah, well played to you. Hope to see you back. I was excited to see your name up there. It's always cool to see new players. Millennia looks good, yeah. It does, okay. Yeah, the Dowie must prevail. They did. They should. Oh my god, the, the come from behind mechanic was the worst thing ever. It was the worst. This is my most feared matchup is B-Spend. It's actually a good matchup for both sides. Like, Beastmen have good cost-effective sil silver-shielded infantry now. Um, Centigors of Zinch could actually be good here because they have a ton of AP and they're fast and their shields can deal with skirmishers a little bit better. Um, you have Razor Gore Herds or S-tier against Dwarves. Ungor Raiders kill Slayers. You have Chariots if you want to get even crazier. Like, honestly, this matchup is, is okay for either side. Uh, I do... I like turn-based strategy. I do. I do. I just like for me crusader kings is a little bit too slow but one of my favorite games of all time was um was civilization 5 brave new world i think is what it was called the expansion i love that game it was so freaking good i used to love playing as um ethiopia and playing like a, a super tall civ or playing as um playing as france and going for the culture victories 
I, it was really fun. It was really fun. Like for me, that that was the pinnacle of like turn-based strategy. Like was Civ Five. I didn't play Civ Six though, so I I could be I could be wrong. Is Yuan Bo still viable? He is. He's good. Yeah. So if you know your opponent's going to be bringing characters like foot characters or characters that are easy to catch, Yuan Bo is really good. I think he's underexplored. Yeah, I watched the Dune movie, dude. It was so good. It was good. Uh, how good do you think Norsk is for a single faction tourney? Norsk is really good, Lucas. Like, Norska has one of the highest win rates in tournaments. And that's what's cool. So if you head to Total Tavern, if you're a little bit newer to multiplayer, the stats are still filling up. So give it a couple of weeks and you'll have better stats. But you can already see Norska has a 67% win rate. Um, they're really only, they've lost a couple sparse games here and there, but Norska is very good. Like, they're, you know, in the top rung of factions right now. So, yeah, Norska is a great faction, which is funny because they've never gotten any updates. Uh, yeah, so steam tanks are awful against dwarves because dwarves have really good cannons and shooting, so they'll just kill the steam tank. And dwarves don't really care about terror that much because their base leadership is super high, and they have a, they have slayers who are immune to uh, unbreakable, and they have longbeards who are immune to psychology, so you're not going to have success with that. Yeah. Yeah, Norsk has always been good. Yeah, pretty good. Civ 5 was so good, yeah. Civ 6 is pretty good. I feel like Civ 5 was, yeah, maybe we'll go back and play that. I would totally do that, like a Civ 5 playthrough. Like a PvP stream, get a couple of you guys and we could we could run it back. It'd be fun. Cause Civ Five has really good simultaneous turns, if I remember correctly. I did it. I really disliked the art style of Civ Six. Like the cartoony art style they went to, it was a big turnoff for me. I, I really disliked it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll give Age of Mythology a look. I will. I'll give it a look. I, I don't know how it's played, though, so I'm probably going to be terrible at it, but at least I have some Age of Empires experience now, so. Civ 6 is easier to get into, but the loyalty mechanic and climate stuff can be infuriating on high difficulty. Got it. Yeah, I remember just playing Civ, Civ 5 for hours. Like, I would go visit my grandparents, and there was no internet there, so I would just play single player on a laptop at night when everyone was asleep and jam it. Uh, vampire counts aren't doing poorly, dude. They have a 50% win rate. They're doing just fine. That's good. They're like a balanced faction. Va vampires are good. They're very polarizing. Like vampire counts like... Oh, hopefully the players aren't ready. Let me ready up here. So vampire counts either like crush you or kind of like struggle. You know, they're they're weird. Um, no, vampire counts are good. They're a good faction. They're good. Bow to your sensei. Dude, I love that. That whole Rex Quando is the funniest thing. I had those pants. The Rex Quando pants from the thumbnail. Let me show you guys. I'll whip it out real quick. Here we go, baby. Let's see if I still have it. Facebook is like such a such a boomer app now. I love it. It's but it, what's great about Facebook is it's like a it's like a repository of your history, you know. Um. All right. So let's see here. Yeah. Trying to trying to see it. Yeah, the picture's a little blurry. Let's see if you can find it. So this is a photo from, would have been 2000 something photo. When I, I played on a, a dodgeball team in college, we were super haggard. Actually, that's not true. We got to the grand finals of our college. We lost in the finals, but we got there. So this was this was in college. I'm in the back with the American flag pants. I grew a mustache for it as well. But you can see the um, those are my teammates. And our entire team grew like really shitty like handlebar mustaches for the event. Um, yeah, so the American flag pants are back there. You can see them. I could zoom in a little bit, but you know, you guys get the picture. We we got really far. We got second place and there was like 30 teams too. We we did pretty good, but we lost to a team of freshmen. They were just way more athletic than us. <laughs> Um, how do I get rid of this thing? Okay, there you go. Perfect. There's there's the photo. There we go, man. All right. You guys like it. <laughs> Terrible? How you bite your tongue, dude? Yeah. It was fun, dude. Uh, what do you think would need to change for SEs? SEs are good. They're niche, but, you know, just like in tabletop, SEs are more of a niche thing. Yeah. Freedom intensifies, yeah. That was pretty fun. That's, that was dodgeball. That was dodgeball, yeah. All right, guys, let's break it down. Here we are in the grand finals. 
that's the elegant way of saying we're too well our team was pretty athletic but like our whole team were like 22 23 year olds and we lost to this team called the honey badgers and they were all these like super athletic 18 year olds like and it was like yeah i mean i was i was able to keep up with them but a lot of the guys on my team had like knee injuries and yeah, were not super athletic themselves so yeah all right guys let's get it ladies and gentlemen we got Bestigore Herds against the Dowie. And what were we talking about earlier? We're like, where are Bestigores good? Probably against Dowie. They can kill pretty much any dwarf infantry effectively, except hammers, obviously, which you're probably not going to be seeing. We got the Wargore here. Wargores are kind of a cool tech. So look at this double Wargore against the Dowie. We're seeing a lot of fun units. This has been a great tournament today. This is what happens when you, you know, take out Kislev. But yeah, Wargores are solid. They have shields, silver shields. They can take missiles as well, and they have anti-infantry. We got Morgor, <laughs> Morgor the Shadow, Malagor the Shadow Cave, yes. And he's going to be rocking Pendulum on the Dwarves. The rest of the army is going to be Minotaurs. And a lot of besties, guys. He's going hard. He's going hard in the paint here with the Bestigor herds. Look at that. All right. They're, they're ready to go, man. They're ready. Looking at old Hitman Hippo, his battle line is going to be a super wide Dowie stack. It's going to be Dwarf Warriors with great weapons in the secondary line, which is going to be very cost effective. And uh, we got Blasting Charges to deal with the Bestigors in tandem with the cheap great weapons. Rangers with uh, throwing weapons, the great weapon Rangers. I like this tech with Ulthar's Raiders. They, in theory, should wreck Bestigors pretty bad in combat. So, uh, not in combat, but at range, excuse me. We got Ungram Iron Chad. Corlers, 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 lots of Dowie units, very wide, 16 stack against 9. All right, guys, let's see how this goes. Good luck, have fun to the players. Let's see what they're saying here. Uh, nothing to me, so I would imagine they'll be starting very, very soon. I think Corn uh, to borrow a turn where it is haggard. Yeah, Corn sucks. Corn's like the worst faction in the game. They suck in both land battle and dom. You can still win games with them, but you're just at a disadvantage like 80% of the time. This is the grand finals. This is the grand finals, yeah. All right, guys. It's go time. It's party, ladies and gentlemen. The forces of hell will uh, advance out of the woods, that being the beastmen, of course. And the horn has been sounded. Objectives open up in two minutes. Now, this is actually a change I've been advocating for with CA, is having the objectives open up much sooner, maybe like 30 seconds or almost instantly. I think it'd be good to, you know, get the game action going a little bit quicker. But even still, it's not a huge deal. It gives us time to, like, look at the armies and, uh, you know, see how that all goes. Hot wife in chat. She's here and is supporting the old dodgeball days. Wargore's 55 and 40. A little bit of lag here in the lobby. Hopefully it's something that will subside. We don't want to get dragged into a long, laggy fight with the dwarves. Never fun. So beastmen are going to get their units and try and take this uh, objective, which has a lot of good line of sight. You see the trees here. You see trees here. So shooting here is very hard. And then what they can do, this is like the overall game plan. Let me explain this here. So beastmen, they take this objective. The dwarves... Uh, move up and move up. Okay. So then the beastmen clash here. The dwarves will then pull their reserve assets from around the back to help in the fight. And then beastmen can do ambushes here. That is probably how I would uh, go for it if I were playing the beastmen. And Scrabble Dag's a really good player. So he's probably going to see that. And, you know, that'll be the option. So the dwarf call in is going to be even more angry Dowie. Slayers are definitely something you need in your army, but it's going to be dwarf warriors with gray opens. I think he saw the best of Gors immediately he saw the besties uh, back here these ones were deployed in the open so i think he knows besties are out and that's why we're going to be seeing some great opens come out for the dwarf warriors of course dwarf warriors do lose uh decisively to bestigors but they cost like half as much so if you get like a dwarf warrior and a miner and they can beat a bestigor that's incredibly cost effective for you it's incredibly cost effective all right so objective three is going to be opening here we do have morker not morker malagor jesus they all sound the same uh, Malagor is going to be flying out of the woods and pendulum targets would be the missiles so you want a pendulum down on the ultar Raiders, or if the Dowie do do a, like a big haggard blob or something you know you can you can get them there but the beast will probably won't advance until the objectives open up advancing bestigors into this line is going to hurt they're going to eat a shit ton of shooting uh, we don't see any cygors any missiles anything like that so butchers of Kalkengard, no basic minotaurs and more basic minotaurs so basic minotaurs are pretty good they do have anti-infantry no shields though which kind of sucks but they do rip through the infantry very, very effectively. So we're going to see if that, uh, you know, gets the job done. So the Wargors will also push in, but you got to be careful because this dwarf army does have Ungram. Ungram will beat the brakes off a of Wargor for sure. Uh, he hits very hard and, of course, has really good armor piercing. So he's going to feel pretty comfortable. Slayers, good call in. Uh, there's probably going to be some mobility coming to maybe try and pressure the dwarven lines at this point. But the Dowie have set up on two points. And, uh, yeah, the objective is working like they should. It's going to force the Beastman player to attack. 
and uh, also force the dwarves out of the corner. So that's the whole principle behind the objectives, basically. Although land battle attorneys do have rules against white line camping, it still happens from time to time, but it's uh, something that they do a pretty good job of. So. All right, guys. Objective two is there. Objective one is open. The battle soon to be on in Malagor the Dark Turkey. He sits in the skies awaiting his pendulum casts as the points start ticking in favor of the Dowie. The Beastmen may be going for an envelop. I can see that, actually. That wouldn't be a bad idea. So Beastmen come up and around here and, like, really make the position awkward. And then they crash out of the woods. Ooh, okay. I like this. I like this. So the Beastmen are actually going to go for a full envelop, it looks like, which I, I think is a great idea. Dwarves struggle to reposition. Um, once they get in their little box, they like to kind of sit there. And now we see some Longbeards with Grey Opens being called in. These units are quite solid against Beastmen. They have charge defense against large foes, so they don't get absolutely plowed by large things. And they have enough armor piercing to fight against the troopers. They're immune to psychology, so they do a lot of good stuff. They do a lot of good stuff. Beastmen calling out Zangors. No Centigors of Zinch yet. I, I feel like we'll maybe see them in the late game. Like right now, the Centigors of Zinch feel like kind of a haggard idea because the dwarves are so like formationed up. But once the battle becomes more chaotic and there's like some openings and different things like that, I think that's when the Centigors of Zinch could make an appearance. Bessie's moving into the woods with some Zangors. Going to be trying to outflank here, but we do see the Longbeards with Great Opens being maneuvered. Razor Gore Herds are also another really good call-in. Uh, they do great against Dowie. They're very cheap, armor-piercing, very cost-effective, so having them to help overwhelm the flank position is good. Because Monstrous Units can stand on top of infantry very well in this game, and they can, um, they can definitely just have, be a huge multiplier in terms of how much damage output you got there. So, All right. So Bessigore Herd is here, and uh, they're moving. We got two of those. Yeah, two Zangors here. Wargors and uh, Bestigor Herds on Objective 3. All right, all right. And old Ungram, he's just like, come at me, bros. The Beastmen are going to probably lose out on a lot of points here. But, you know, it's very important how you engage the Dwarves. If you charge head-on into their ranks, just like a straight-up mouth-breathing frontal charge, they will usually steamroll you. So you need to kind of, you know, watch out for that. And look at this. Ooh, we actually get a Blasting Charge uh, ambush. So in tabletop and old tabletop, dwarven miners could actually like appear from the underground. So that's kind of my headcanon for them appearing right here. They do throw some blasting charges at the Zangors, but don't get a lot of damage. In. And now the fighting is going to begin. Um, Bestigors might eat a blasting charge to the face here. We'll have to see. Here they come. The Dowie surging into the trees, but they're about to get plowed over by these Bestigors. The dreaded slideshow gores. Yeah, baby. Peer-to-peer -peer connections. I love it. Oh, just pretend it's like an action scene in a shitty movie. There you go. So, yeah, these dwarves are going to get just steamrolled, like, really hard uh, if they decide to fight. But it looks like they're going to retreat, which is smart. Pulling back and forcing the Agors into the dwarven territory is the way. And now the Brayhorn has been sounded. We see Minotaurs coming out of the trees with the best Agors and uh, the onslaught of the Beastmen will be beginning very, very soon. So, yeah, we see these guys continuing to retreat, having models being killed as they run. But the dwarves, they got schemes, they got plans. More Slayers saturating in. Minotaur still waiting in the trees. Not a single cannon. I feel like like one cannon might have been a nice tech, like a flame cannon here. With this like wide dwarven stack could have been very, very good. We haven't had a dwarf win in some time either. Very cinematic slow-mo, that's right. Him and Hippo, I believe, is California-based. I don't know about Scrambled Egg Special. I know Scrambled Eggs had some internet issues before, so could be him, but we're not going to play the blame game. We're just going to have some fun, man. Zack Snack Snyder's Warhammer Fantasy? Yes, it is. Look at that, we even got Malagor back here with his old pimp cane. Malagor's an okay fighter, and, you know, he's going to help route off these dwarves. And now the onslaught of the Beastmen is here. The Bray Horn has been sounded. Wargors, this is a good call. Uh, move them through the battle lines. Get them on blasting charges, right? Uh, if you can. We do have the Bugman's Rangers and the various other rangers in the back going to be opening up their salvos of fire, but the Wargor does have a shield, which is going to be blocking up some of the fire. And uh, there is going to be some witchcraft going down. Dwarves doing something. Oh, marked by Ulthar. Very nice. But Scrambled Egg Special immediately sees it and pulls back. What an MLG play. So instead of sending those uh, Bestigors to their death, he baits out the marked by Ulthar, and he's able to pull back, which is quite nice. The old Minotaurs at the ready. Harpy's going to be diving on missiles as well. Meanwhile, on the side, the Bestigors do kill a Dwarven Miner unit, but the uh, crossfire from these Coilers seems to be doing very well. And Razorgore Herds have not engaged yet. Definitely need to get those guys active. Now, where is the first Pendulum going to be? Uh, we haven't seen a Pendulum yet. We got the Zack Snyder slideshow going right here. Hopefully you guys can survive a little bit of lag today. It's, it's the nature of the beast in the grand finals. Uh, you know, we had no lag earlier with him, but, you know, it happens. You guys need to get off the Wi-Fi, I'm telling you. If you're playing in our events, no more Wi-Fi. You got to run a cable across your house and just do it. Oh, look at that. A timing pendulum. Is he going to get it? Oh, nice pendulum right there. Goes right through those Ulthar Raiders. Does some really nice damage. So we do see Malagor the Dark Omen causing some 
Good disruption in the backfield here, as there is going to be a fat blasting charge. Zack Snyder, blasting charges, let's go. Here it comes. All right, so yes. Oh, yes. We get it in slow-mo. If anything's going to be in slow-mo, it should be blasting charges. But Objective 2 does get flipped to the Beastmen, and Objective 3 belongs to the Beastmen as well. On the flank, we do have Zangors versus Dwarf Warrior Grey Open. Should win. Razor Gore Herds onto the Longbeards is incredibly cost-effective, and there is going to be another one. So this whole flank engagement going very well for the Beastmen. I think, as a matter of fact, they'll probably win it. The Best of Gores will come in and crush these Longbeards with Razor Gore support. Zangors will defeat Dwarf Warriors. But back in the middle of the engagement here, we do have the Best of Gore Herds. Crump it away into the Miners of Blasting Charges as these Zangors swarm all over the battlefield. Harpies do get on top of the Quarrelers. They're going to be shutting them down for a hot moment, while Ungram Iron Fist is uh, trying to do battle with the Minotaurs. Minotaurs pushing, force pathing through Slayers, which is very dangerous. Uh, they're going to be getting hunted and picked off by Slayers and just taking so much damage. Uh, dwarves are up in value, but the Mino Train trying desperately to get on top of the missiles, which makes sense. Ooh, big impact damage from those Minotaurs. Definitely should keep rotating them. If they stay here, the Slayers are going to catch you. So you can see the Slayers are pumping those Dwarven legs. So uh, yeah, they're, they're on the hunt. Look at those guys, man. Another Pendulum in the back going down. As far as the objectives go, we do see Objective 1 owned by the Dwarves. Two and three are owned by the Beastmen. And the Beastmen are getting pretty cost-effective fights with their infantry here. Best of Gores crushing through Dwarven Minor infantry. And the Best of Gores have now gotten a nice flank onto the Longbeards. Although Longbeards holding on like Chads. And Slayers are going to be able to deal with these disgusting pigs very effectively. So you're going to see the Razor Gores getting cut to shreds by the Slayers. Oaths will be fulfilled. Yes, yes. So farewell to those besties if they decide to stay. But it looks like they retreat. And the Minotaur Blob, has it rotated or did it stay and die? Looks like it rotates over to the middle. Um, value right now, Hitman Hippo is only up by about six or 700. And that can really cascade very quickly. If um, if you start to just lose too many positions as the Dwarves, you can fall apart very easily. Although Dwarves are very stalwart. It's not as bad as like Grand Cathay. If Grand Cathay loses like a big frontal fight, and it, it's tough for them to retake ground. Whereas Slayers give you a little bit of punching power in melee. That helps with the monstrous pressure. But yeah, the Beastmen do have the two objective cap on them. Vestigors and Zangors on the flanks fighting well. A couple piggies going to be rampaging into the Slayers here, which feels bad. Pendulum going down. Wargor helping against the Bugman's Rangers. And a pretty good Pendulum. Honestly, though, Flock of Doom probably is still better. Just spamming Flock of Doom. So here you go. Here's some more um, super cuts. Yes, the DC Universe haggard slow-mos. It's funny how, like, back in the day, we used to think slow-mos were, like, the coolest thing ever. But now you see them, and they're often just so campy and shitty. I was watching some just awful movie called the legend of hercules last night it's like from 2014 and like there was so much just like corny slow-mo it's like the whole movie like every fight scene you know every fight scene all right so the haggard lag continues which probably favors the dwarves honestly the lag is helpful for the dowie because it allows them to react to the mobility a little bit easier and uh in the backfield we do see the bugman's rangers being shut down we do see the cavalry also getting on top of quarrelers and yeah, this flank has been won by the Beastmen for the most part, but will it you know, lead to more? It really is the question. Also, good positioning here. We see Harpies and Harpies, and the reason why they're sitting there is because they're waiting for missiles to be called in. So if the Dwarves try and call in some missile units to deal with some of the Beastmen mass, the Harpies can definitely intercept them. So Slayer Spam is probably going to be your best friend. The Minotaur Blob has been very, very um, devastating here. So here comes the Minos uh, collapsing in, and this could be a triple cap for the Beastmen. Although the Dwarves are resurgent on the middle. It looks like two units of Dwarf Warriors might be able to get through those Angors. Nice Pendulum there and kind of goes through and hits the edge of those Dwarf Warriors as well. Again, I really think the Pendulums, though they're doing good, maybe Flock of Doom spam would be better. I don't know. Pendulum seems like it's been doing okay. So yeah, Beastman threatening a triple cap, ladies and gentlemen. This, mini this mobile Minotaur Blob has been super devastating. Just crushing these Dwarf positions and Ungram Haggard Fist has not been able to kind of keep pace. Um, you definitely just ignore him and let him, you know, run around and waddle and do all those things. But the dwarves have a big presence of troopers in the middle, a lot of dwarf warriors, but they're not fighting on the objective, which is very unfortunate. On the flank, we do see a little bit of an attempt to call in some miners. Maybe they're gonna move up and get that objective, but the beastmen do respond with some uh, razor gores, which are a hard counter against miners. Very, very hard counter. Um, war gores are still doing great. Like these type of foot characters are very good. The war gores just kind of bump and grind in there. And against slayers, talk about awesome. 80 armor, good combat stats, anti-infantry. It's, uh, it's very, very great. So objective two, still owned by the beastmen. Objective three is flipped. The beastmen have really, really flipped this game on their head. And the Bray Herd looks like they might be taking over this match. They might be taking over the match. Yes, yes. A lot of Zangors heading up. Really good reinforcing unit. Housekeeping being done. If you guys are a little bit newer to Dom, when your unit's at like 1%, you want to unsummon it and send it back to the pool to start recharging because there is a recharge time. But yeah, the dwarves are starting to fall apart. Um, when the beastmen are ahead of you in value, that's really bad. We see the uh, Dwarf Warriors going to get massacred by the Minotaurs here. The middle objective is under the clutches of the Beastmen as well. 
And overall, the uh, Vestigors, a full health unit of Vestigors basically, is penetrating into the Dwarven lines. I would I would put money on this game being over, which hopefully they'll just leave soon, because spare us this slideshow, you know. Spare us this slideshow. This is so brutal. Oh, God, fix your internet, people. Fix your internet. Although, you know, some people can't help it. They just live somewhere where they don't have access to good internet, which I completely understand. That feels really bad. It's CA's fault for not giving us servers. Let's be real. All right. So... We do see the Minotaurs cleaving through, and they're going to scream across. Get a big old charge right there. And uh, objective number one is owned by the uh, Beastmen. Doesn't look like that's going to be flipping back anytime soon. Dwarves are basically losing on every front. And though they're trying to do a cheeky objective grab on the side, which could get them maybe a little bit of momentum in the game, the Razor Gores are very quick to intercept them. And this is what I'm talking about. The more chaotic the game gets, the better. So um, for the Beastmen, that is. Yeah, Miners of Blastery Charge is getting wrecked, so there's a second one here as well. They'll probably get 2v1. Those Razor Gores are going to kill them both. Yeah, we have another Razor Gore herd coming in. Uh, Ungram trying to get this objective back. You know, he's got some Dowie resurgence here, but it's going to take way too long to get these objectives from the Beastmen. They still have so many, like, healthy Vestigors. It's not healthy, but a lot of them on the field. we got 82 right here. we got 28 right here. Currently sitting at 1,000 value. So, yeah, for all of you Vestigore enjoyers, for all, like, one or two of you in, um, in chat... You know, they did well. Your best of course probably won you the game. Probably won you the game. Ungram, you know, cl classic dwarf problem. Just waddling around. Nobody wants to fight you. The Minotaurs are like, screw that shit. Let's get out of here. The Wargore might take the challenge, but yeah, Ungram is, is not going to be able to get in there. How many books will be needed? A lot. This game's over. It's 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 hard for the dwarf player to tell. Hitman Hippo is a very scrappy player, but this game's over. Uh, the Beast Men are just rampaging around now. Minotaur is getting a big collapsing charge on the Dwarf Warriors here. We see Dwarves getting wrecked in the woods here uh, by the Razor Herds, which are just rampaging through them. Even a Zangor or a Gore unit would be able to deal with that. And um, yeah, Best of Gores were really solid this game. They were really good. They, they found engagements without getting pounded too hard, and uh, it got the job done. We got it done. So we got two here, we got three here, and one is being slightly contested by the Dowie, but they're going to be, it's going to be a thousand points here in a second. And, um, you know, I was in the situation earlier against the Wood Elves where you just like, you're like, maybe I have a chance. The value is kind of close, but it's really hard to come back from a triple cap like this. Yeah, this is a best of best matchup. Against Grand Cathay, you could probably go besties too. Like, a similar build against Grand Cathay would probably be good, uh, to be honest. Seitang is actually quite solid. I've been seeing a lot of Grand Cathay players. I'm going to spend some time off stream when I get back from our road trip um, practicing Grand Cathay. And even though I won't probably win a tournament with them, I'll still play them. And, we can explore Grand Cathay next. Yeah. All right. So miners are going to head back to the objective and try and get that. Uh, the Beastmen will probably be able to head them off before they actually get that. This one is kind of flipping a little bit, but the Minotaurs are just going to come in and just pound these dwarves again. They do have some Slayers, but what kind of gores do we have here? We have what appears to be just the Blackhorn Dravagers, so pretty good. The dreaded Slideshow Rear Charge. Here it comes. And, um, yeah, nice one. Slayers do counter them, though. They turn around and start fighting. But the objective uh, still in flux here. We see them eclipsing 1,200 points. And that's going to be it. The slideshow's over. Congratulations. The Beastmen have won. Very cool stuff. So Scrambled Egg Special and his uh, beloved Beastmen have won. Very cool to see that. Um, you know, he, he plays Vampire Coast too, which is really neat to see. I know he's really good at them. But yeah, the build was good. So if you guys are looking, I mean, Hitman Hippo is a top tier player. He's very good. Very, very good. So this Beastmen build clearly worked well. The Wargores were good. The Pendulums were good. The Besties all basically paid for themselves. The Minotaur mobility, even though it's kind of hard to tell because of the lag, um, they did well. So we're still waiting on painting. We're still painting up the armies, James. Well, I'll make an announcement when it's going to happen, but hopefully in the next couple months. It's taking longer than expected. Um, yeah. GG. Well played. Good game. The Bray Herd winning an SFT. How cool is that? So our last three SFTs have been won by the Beastmen, by the Wood Elves, um, and then by Slanesh. So pretty cool to see like a, a diverse meta emerging where all these different factions can uh, can do it, you know. All right. GG well played, guys. That's going to be it. Hopefully you enjoyed. Drop a like on the way out if you enjoyed the stream. It does help a lot. I'm going to go hang out with the lady. Enjoy the day. And um, I'm going to be gone from tomorrow until Friday or Saturday. Yeah, probably until Saturday. Friday or Saturday we'll be back. Um, but as soon as we get back, we'll be doing some fun streams. We'll have another tournament and um, and all that good stuff. So appreciate you all. Adios, my friends. Dovi Zenya. See you on the other side. Take care of yourselves. And uh, that is going to be it today. And if you enjoyed the tournament, once again, do drop a like on the way out. It helps quite a bit. So thank you for watching.
See you guys. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's for the Chaos Clash. I got to get rid of that. It's still cool though. There you go. We got to go back to the OG. All right, guys. See you later. Take care of yourselves. That's it. And uh, adios.